help you right now. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to our large card club live stream broadcasting from beautiful Austin, Texas. We've got a special episode tonight, and it is the blue shirt, sit and go. My name's Slick Rick, and joining me today, the one, the only, Bones is going to be helping me commentate. Bones, what's going on? Not too much, Rick. Happy to be here. So what, we, what you're looking at is a table full of supervisors here at the lodge. We'll go around the table after this first hand. Looks like we've got the voice, MFA, Amy, final table, Kev, cage man, beekeeper, right there in the blue shirt, maestro Matt Sweeney in the sixth seat, LC right there in the seventh seat. Nervous. The lizard of the lodge, Josh, in the eighth seat. And there he is, the tournament director extraordinaire in the ninth seat. Anthony. Or Ant. Clayton is in the box, the tallest dealer in the country. Mickey's our game host. There's our first flop. Very good. Cage man, lizard with the sevens, and lizard with the check mark. He will win the first pot of the night. We are playing 100, 200, 200. I can beat a deuce. I can't beat a seven, though. Nice hand, Joshua. Let's go. And so basically, uh, Bones, we're going to have two people who cash. First place. I want to say is eighteen hundred dollars. Second place is going to be nine hundred dollars. Everyone else gets nothing. Yeah, the sound is nice. Yeah. Everybody got twenty-five k in chips. Yep. Big fan. And it'll go rather quickly, I expect. Be right next to you. I can't do it, but. Yeah. So there's a thing you can do that. I don't know, I don't know if you need your fingers, your hands to be slick or. Uh, I think Wait, this I is a misdeal. Yeah. Anthony programming the background TV there with the keyboard? Yeah, we're trying to get the clock up. Uh, usually we have a picture in, above the fireplace, but we'll have the tournament clock. So those of you who have been to the lodge, you want to re you'll recognize many of these faces at the table. They usually wear the blue shirt. Except for Maestro Matt Sweeney, who's the executive producer of the live stream. ...is dealt out by accident. It's just random card theory, and you have randomly zero cards. So who's your pick today? Well, randomly zero cards. I... Josh has told me he's never lost. He's 2-0 and oh in these dealer sit-and-goes. He's in the eighth seat. So I'd have to go with... I'm going to go with Josh. How about yourself? Josh or, or Tom right there, the voice in seat one is good. Yeah, I, I, like, uh, I like Tom's chances, and uh, Kevin seemed pretty confident. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I like either... Uh, Yes, sir, sir. You never... Either Tom or Kevin. I guess uh, I'll take Kevin. All right. Those are our picks. Chat, who do you think is going to take this one down? Heads up between Beekeeper and Maestro. Do you guys still do uh, sandwich bets back here? We can always do a sandwich bet. Okay, you want to do a uh, last longer? I'll sure. Take, uh, I'll take Kevin, and you can take, uh, who was your pick? Uh, lizard in seats eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. You got it. One sandwich on the line. The sandwich from Bones would be tasty. Less than King Four here. I just wonder if every time I act, you're going to go. <laughs> every single We're going to listen to a lot of table talk today that should get pretty funny with these, this group. No, it won't be every time. Okay, just most. Yeah, this is a pretty, uh, pretty fun and friendly group. I'm uh, very lucky to get to interact with most of them on a uh, pretty regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the best parts about the lodge is the staff here. I was joking with Anthony that I've never seen him play poker. He's always directing the tournaments. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see him in the lineup. I figured he would be out there supervising the monster today. Got some new graphics showing the names above and their chip counts. We've gotten a lot of feedback from y'all in the past. 
and our new graphics are in place. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't get it. <laughs> tonight, like tonight. People that can only, like night. they have to have electronics. I thought you were making a pun on mm -hmm. pen, not tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, my girlfriend calls me down. Friday, March yeah. 29th, what? Have you played many singles, Rick? <laughs> I have, um... On the 29th? Out in the World Series of Poker, when I used to go out there, I'd play a couple sit-and-goes, because they're... It, you know, just so, so readily available. They just start at any time, you know, as soon as they get them. You are not paying attention. LC with the ladies. Today, today. Today's not March 29th. Oh, my God. You really heard it? It is. Huh? It is. Today's the Did you guys see the most recent Rogan podcast? What? You're not serious, are you? Never mind. He's messing with them. There's the ace for the lizard. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Good thing I'm wearing sunglasses. Kev with the only club in his hand. I didn't drink last night. And LC is not fearful of the two overs, and she's going to keep firing out. Isn't it the worst when you've got pocket queens and the ace king hits? Yeah, it's definitely not ideal. Um, especially four away. Oh boy. Uh, my brain In some of these looser life. games, most people, or I want to say most people, a lot of people defend or, or call with uh, a lot of ace x hands. So the, the more loose the game, the more likely someone is to have you know, uh, ace seven off or something like that. Do you know what today is? Uh, so Lauren's going to, or LC's going to keep betting here. Today is not March 29th. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Now Jesse's a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lizard does so much around here at the lodge, been around forever. He's going to make the call with his ace, and now he's got two pair. The fourth club hits the board, though. Let's see if Lauren dis or LC decides to uh, bluff with his hand. I mean, you just, you just don't know. Horrible card on the river for the lizard. <laughs> And he's going to throw it away. And LC. Nice. Nice play. Nice, nice. <laughs> you know, sometimes it doesn't matter, Rick. You have queens and the two overcards hit, and you just decide to bluff it through. So. Let's look at. You might need a whisper tool. We got to get that. And then whisper in his ear. We got to get the uh, instant replay working again. That's a note that I have to get to the maestro. Just to relay some info. No instant replay today. I feel like I'm, look, I'm mostly to blame, but I feel like you guys are partly to blame for this, too. Yes. We might be. Yeah. Can confirm. Everyone thought Anthony was going to be the first one to mess that up. Yeah. You said white claw? I was half joking. Yeah. LC with another pocket pair, this time the sailboats. Oh. I might work later. I haven't decided. It might it work. It takes one hour to dissolve the alcohol out of your system. So yeah, per deal. Sounds like there's some uh, discussion about white claws being <laughs> passed around. I will buy Slick Rick Thank you. lunch or dinner at some point. <laughs> hey, there you go. Sounds somebody, like you're uh, buying, getting dinner bought for you. Somebody just said that. Coffee, water, White Claw. Let's go. I wonder. I, want, I need to know who said that. In that order? Yeah. <laughs> it's a sequential check order. Some gut shots for Beekeeper and Ant. Downer. <laughs> and a set for the cage man who keeps checking. Now he's got the boat. What do you think about that check with the boat? I think it's it's okay. Um, I wouldn't expect someone. I would expect if someone had a ten that they would bet the flop most of the time. I was like, I felt like I didn't check. So I think you're a little happier to to bet out yourself there. And yeah, that happens. The horrible river for him. Double ports the bear. Du double pairs the board there. Yeah, I, I probably would have gone for the turn check raise there. Yeah. Um, that way you can, uh, you know, keep getting money in, against the ten, and uh, hopefully get some draws to call you. What's up, buddy? I am, uh... Chip values. 
Purple chips, 500. Yellow chips are 1,000. And the orange chips are 5,000. I'm fully aware of everything. Don't think we'll have anything else today. We may color up a little bit as we get. How are we sharing it? Get further along. Because we're here. Because we're present. Mistake happened. Because we're present. Is that? And rather than fixing the mistake, we have to. You could have just let it go. Yeah. All right, move on. I still love these Indian. cards. Indian. <laughs> <laughs> they go. <laughs> Wait, is that it? Yeah, that's it. So, seeing Kevin open a hand like Jack three off from the button, you kind of get a feel that he's just going to raise every button when it's folded to him. Um, that's kind of one of those things that, if I was watching a stream, and trying to understand how people think about poker. That's kind of something I would note. Um, Jack three off is, you know, I'm about as bad as it gets. Exactly. So you know that, like, Kevin in general is probably going to be <laughs> taking advantage of spots where he thinks that uh, he can get some steals through. Right. So from that, I would also kind of think that he's going to continuation bet a lot. Because um, I think those two kind of go together, showing aggression. Yeah. Oh, do you? In spots where you think you can pick up the pot, you know, that's kind of how I would extrapolate that as well. It's good info. LC picks up her third pocket pair of the day with the jacks. Maestro money in there too. And Maestro Matt Sweeney comes along with the clean diaper. Maestro money. Elsie also deals on the stream. You probably recognize her. She's one of our stream dealers. And Elsie. Elsie, nice hand. Thank is you. Starting to stack chips. Chip leader at the table with 29,900. Oh, Opa! Floor? It's pretty cool to get to see how uh, this group plays poker. Exactly. <laughs> Nick did not have fun yesterday. He didn't. Yeah, he said he didn't do very well. And when he doesn't do well, he doesn't have a good time. I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I let him buy out for 15. Golf. He Wait. said he didn't oh. gamble. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that <laughs> wow. I knew there was more. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Lauren, Lauren's going to go up to our profile to skull. Yeah. Wait, wait. Nick, March 30th wait. is going to be a long day for you, bud. <laughs> yeah, like, it'll be like, it'll be, we'll be gambling for like $20 or That's, something, and I'll be like, okay, sure. <laughs> That's, I was about to say, wait, you're... Suited you're Broadway right. cards for Final Table Kev. Yeah. It's like he yeah. raised it yeah. to 700, on, on and Cage Man will come along. On a game that is known you. for gambling. Looks <laughs> like Cage Man's going to three bet here. I think he said because you didn't yeah, want to gamble or something. Made it 2,000. Like but. And it's heads that. up. <laughs> yeah. Cage Man in position here. Hey, somebody go text Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry. Don't know in 30 minutes. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I wanted to out intensify you. You, you, that was intense. Cage Man's other nickname is Logo Man. I miss. He has more logoed merchandise yeah. than any yeah. human yeah. being should be allowed to have. Right. Shoes, vests, shirt, hat, all wearing the Lodge logo. He's proud. A proud employee. No, it was me. Me. How did he get the vest? Of Lodge Card Club. He made it. Wow. He made, he's got shoes that have the Lodge logo. Oh. I call him Logo Man, That's Merch a Man. That's a company man right there. It no, is? Actual golf. Not, we we're, weren't playing Frisbee. Oh. Oh. Right. Right. They can't, they're not just gonna throw Maestro the with the <laughs> sailboat is going to raise to 600. <laughs> and the blind, small blind, <laughs> LC is going to come along and big good. blind, so. Let the kids play with it. You know, I can say you get tilted as a disc golfer and you just launch your disc and you're like, oh, fuck, now I got to go. Maestro on the button. and get that thing. If you can LC, yards, joking, then, uh, top I'm pair. <laughs> it's called being facetious. Spell it. No chance. 
That's one of those if words can, that I would can't never spell it, you're not allowed to use it. No, no, I would never send a text message because right. like when I'm typing a text, right, and like, I don't know how to spell it, but I get it so much. Lizard hits his <laughs> abort <laughs> pair <laughs> on the river. That's when you do speak facetious. Hits hits a pair on the river, and Maestro, just with the sailboats, is going to let it go. And the lizard gets one through there. The LC got one through earlier on the lizard. We got 25k, 20 minute levels. I thought we were getting like 15k, 10 minute levels. <laughs> yeah, I, th I don't think he was expecting uh, better hands to fold there. So it worked out well for him. 20 minute levels is 2 to 3. I like it. 2 to 3. 20 minute levels. Still got about four minutes left in this one. I got to get out of here. You busy? Get out. I don't know, man. Kevin's a crusher. We, we should want him to get out of here, too. Crazy for thinking that. <laughs> yeah, you got those, you're in the 125 PLO game, you can't hang out like four racks. <laughs> well, he's not allowed to have his phone or his camera in here, so he can't take pictures, so. I can't miss out on The voice, Tom in C1, very good poker player, actually has won a few big tournaments. But it's G U back in the day. Yeah, he was just reminding me uh, right before the show of a stream that we played together a couple years ago. And, yeah, I was quite impressed by uh, how well he played during the stream. Check. Check. All right, I like what they're selling. <laughs> Pair for both Lizard and Cage Man. Lizard turns the flush draw as well. You place that so gently. Yeah, it's like the most dainty. <laughs> he doesn't want to break the chips. He's I've seen what happens to our 1K chips at the cage. So now, two pair for the lizard. The voice does hit a pair on the river. Made that call on the turn with just ace high. Now he's got a little bit better than that. But he's going to lay it down. Nice fold there. Joshua, Joshua. It's interesting. I wonder if he was planning on bluffing Club Rivers when he called with the Ace of Clubs tonight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just got me. Nice That's why you bit there by the lizard. Nice hand, Joshua. Yeah, the clubs too. Yeah, too. Yeah, he had the clubs too. His hand was much more reasonable than mine, believe me. <laughs> I Got a great like, shot of our river, studio. Pair on the river and Under like, the lights. I, don't like this anymore. Yeah. I made my hand. Fuck. It's been one heck of a month of March. The mini monster and just around the corner. Save the date. The Lodge Championship Series, our flagship tournament series, April 24th through May 14th. Including in that series is the main event. $3,000 buy-in, $2 million guarantee yeah, bonus. Well, right? You going to fire a bullet in that? Hopefully just one. All right. But I'll, I'll be firing away uh, pretty much that entire month. Uh, there you go. I plan on playing just about everything that runs here. That's hold them. <laughs> they just, like, try to pick up spit. Bones, I, I feel like something big is, tournament-wise, is coming in your future. I, I really do. And when you do, remember that I said that. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the, the exclusive interview. <laughs> the voice hits the bottom straight here with his deuce. I honestly keep forgetting that we're on this. That's right. An ant who hits a pair on the river is going to get raised here by the voice. Oh, Tom. Hello, sir. I don't think you have a seven, so I'll call. I've got a deuce. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> also counts. They go race. up and down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do go up and down. That's how streets work. Who to win? Or lose. Or lose. 
Did I stand there for time? Sorry to take it from my fellow Brit. Who is it? Who is it? I not did call. Oh, he oh, it. Oh, I would have won the first two if I would have played yeah, it. You can tell it's eating out of you. As soon as it's just me. It's me. Oh. <laughs> I already know. Is that, does that thing actually work? Yes. Crazy. Check it out. Let's go. You can look at little it. pictures in and everything. It has very uh, <laughs> NC-17 in it. Yeah, Are you going to play the Monthly Monster this weekend? I'm going to try. You know, we, we do so many streams that it's tough. I do have Friday. I do have... Um, it's just a beard. I do have some time to do it. Up on the level. Did the blank go up right at the right time? I'm sorry. I was all right with it. I'll go up to six. They're taking a look at a little trinket that MFA brought. With pictures in it. Those are always fun. LC. I mean, is that just a With A7 <laughs> folds and the lizard you, with suited Broadway cards comes along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, remember, he's 21 years old. Yeah, <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. You get it? You got it. Yeah. Four yeah. ways to this flop. Back in the day, they used to have these. Nate High Board. Images on there. I like being not the biggest idiot at the table for once. Or he's just young. Yeah. He's like, just being an idiot and just being ignorant. He didn't have the luxury of playing with a light bright, <laughs> domino <laughs> round. What do you think right. about this lead from Maestro in early position, firing out? Um... Is that really what it's called? I think it's. I got a mini. I got a mini. I think it was four way. Four way. Yes. Probably wouldn't do it, but uh, three way I might. Eight four deuce is just really hard for your opponents to connect. Uh, obviously, they're gonna have sets and like some small pocket pairs, but. The, kind of the way that things work is when people have a lot of offsuit combos, um, those, those tend to make up a greater percentage of, of their range. So you get to fold out a whole bunch of like offsuit combos of overcards uh, and some ASEX offsuit, which is obviously very good for you. So I might not do it, but I don't think it's bad at all. I, I think I would prefer to do it if I had a backdoor flush draw, but... Um, you know, it worked out well for my show. You know, on 8-4 deuce, there's not really any draws that people are going to call with. I mean, right. other than 7-6 and some wheel draws, maybe. Uh, I think 9-4 deuce, I'd be a bit more willing to do it. But, uh, yeah, it, it worked out for him. And uh, sometimes you just kind of have a feel for your table and, uh, you know, an understanding of when people aren't going to really fight back without a good hand. So, well played by him. Bottom line is, you didn't grow up in a good era unless you were hit in the head with a lawn dart. Ooh. <laughs> I got hit in the head with a real <laughs> dart. <laughs> real dart. I experienced a lot. It just stuck. <laughs> we were, it can't, just can't, stuck. Can't, me, me and my cousin were playing darts, and it just, this is at Garcia Park. I'm just serious. And, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah. my dad caught me, and I just ran across the dartboard, and my cousin threw it, and I didn't even feel it. <laughs> And it was just like, <laughs> he grabbed me and he pulled it out. I was like, ah! Have you ever been hit in the head with a dart, Rick? Never. Yeah, me neither. This explains everything now with the lizard. <laughs> this is your pick. Yes. <laughs> would you change the pick now that you know that he'd been hit in the head with a dart? I probably yeah. would, but yeah. I'm going to stay with him. <laughs> You can ask the question. Lizard's wearing one of the original Lodge shirts. He's going old school with that shirt that he's got on. Oh, God. I got to get some revenge on Joshua. Looks like a fresh tattoo there for Cage Man. Ooh, I, I agree. It's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of. Keep flopping the window card. Yeah. But then just getting. Lodge Card Club has a ton of tattoos <laughs> of employees. Uh, I, I think of Damon the Tatted One, the Hot Dog Eating Wonder, our dealer Damon, Jesse, Ant. So many mm -hmm. tattoos. You don't have any tattoos, do you? I don't. Neither no. do I. What about if we get to uh, 200,000 subscribers? Hey, just because you're sitting in from Skull Mike doesn't mean you have to be Skull Mike. I'm doing enough. Just literally two weeks away from jumping out of an airplane. It's Mike's turn. He, he can get the tattoo. Exactly. 
The bullets for LC. She's had so many pocket pairs today. And the voice with some Broadway cards. Looks like he's going to raise. How many people do I want to play with me right I now? I see the governor's running for president. Oh. Mm -hmm. See what I did there? Uh-huh. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Back to LC. What does she do here, Bones? Facing the raise. Is he supposed to come back? He's running for creepy I would, mustache. You can call here. I would generally err towards four betting. The award has been won. But, um... Calling is also fine. Uh, She's gonna go with the uh, pretty small four bit and take it down. But yeah, I like it. LC tearing it up today. Snapple. He tried to win that. But I like the way that, that Tom played that hand. Um, he's got a reasonable candidate to three bet. And then, even though he's getting a very good price, you know, King Queen off doesn't play great against an under the gun four betting range. So, King got away from it without you know, putting in too much of a stack. Or is Ace suited a four bet fold? No, I probably would have just flat. What about a min three bet? I should have gone small. You did min. You did, <laughs> did. four bet me, yeah. basically. Almost. Which is the sizing <laughs> you're supposed to go, which is why I folded. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Hmm. That's where you show them the 10 8 of hearts. I'll just call them. That'd be great. Get some. My favorite hand. Oh. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Oh, you gave her the, you got to try speech. Here we go. <laughs> MFA wearing the nice <laughs> hat today, the lucky hat for MFA. <laughs> and Maestro in the big blind is going to defend here with 9-7 offsuit. Blinds are at 200, 300, 300. He already had 600 chips out there. Check. Out there. So he decides to defend here. To, to clarify, the ante isn't, is, it's not really yours when you put it out there. It's, right. It's, you're basically, it's your turn to put out the community ante. Right. Um, I think that's a, a trap that a lot of people get caught in where they think that because they posted the ante, they have to defend more. But in, in which case, I mean, it's not really the case. Um, that money is dead. Um, even the money in front of you and you're blind isn't really yours anymore. You're just getting a better price. Right. Um, so, but I, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't defend 9-7 off there. It's just, right. Uh, it doesn't mean that I have to defend more because it was my turn to post the Andy. Good phrasing. Mm. Like it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MFA fires out 3,000 and the voice with a pair of aces and a gut shot. Goes check, check, and the voice is going to win a nice pot here. 13,600. I like the uh, turn bet by MFA there a lot. She gets to fold out uh, some hands like uh, Queen 9, uh, Pocket Jacks, stuff like that, where, uh, you know, Tom is just not going to want to continue. Like King 10? So I, think, I like the way that both of them play the hand. I was like, I feel like if I hit the 10, it's going to be real bad for Amy. <laughs> yeah. The ace was just as bad. You can uh, post my blinds if I'm not back. How's it going? Oh, deal. Are you, you, are you planning on streaming a lot of the uh, LCS stuff? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> a ton of tournament poker. If you like tournament poker, you know, we've been streaming a lot of tournaments. Uh, the Art of Poker, we had the Mystery Bounty, and tons from the LCS. So keep track on the website yeah, or definitely subscribe to the channel mm -hmm. and hit the notifications and you'll be notified but yeah we're, we're, we're planning to stream a lot of those tournaments it's always fun to watch championship series 
takes place, you know, literally right before as we get a look at the player stacks. LC, the chip leader. A little over 32,000 chips. And MFA now, the short stack, with still plenty of big blinds. 54 big blinds is the shorty. As much as I don't want him to do that, I kind of want to call him bluff. But the Lodge Championship Series, the flagship event, happens right before the World Series of Poker. So why not come to the Lodge, play some tournaments, win some big money, and then head on out to Vegas yeah, for the World Series. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Absolutely a great plan. And, uh, it should be a great warm-up for anyone who wants to get their tournament game uh, you know, where it needs to be before going out to Vegas. Yeah, and the fact is, LC with another pocket pair. I think this is her fifth pocket pair through 18 hands. Thank you. Equity's pretty even here. Lizard with the jack seven out in front. You tired, Jesse? No, actually, I exaggerate my owns. You should hear his sneezes. <laughs> no, I don't exaggerate. My sneezes, I don't exaggerate. My yawns, I do. Interesting choice here to lead into the pre-flop razor by Freeze. the lizard. <laughs> Maestro looking for a gut shot here. <laughs> Backdoor hearts. Heads up, lizard and Maestro. I can go for some wontons, actually. Nice play by Maestro there. There you go. My stroke, my stroke, my stroke. Let's go. So honestly, you know, with the Lodge being able to have tournaments pretty much constantly with 500,000 in the prize pool like the mini monster just had guaranteed, uh, the upcoming Lodge Championship Series where we're going to have a $2 million guarantee. I'm like Switzerland. I'm neutral. These are some of the biggest tournaments you could play in, and it's literally right in your backyard, Bones. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, I, I joke about being thankful to not have to go to Choctaw anymore, but it's, it's, I'm very serious. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, it used to be to play those tournaments, you have to, you know, drive the four and a half hours to Choctaw or go to Vegas. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to have these tournaments. And, you know, uh, I was just trying to uh, push Anthony to have a few other uh, more frequent, like, 1K tournaments. Usually, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> once every couple of weeks, once a month, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to be able to, to come and play and, uh, you know, get some reps in without having to go to Oklahoma or Las Vegas. Exactly. Cage man races with his ladies. And it's back to the voice. The one that's cracked. I cracked it. I'll say it wasn't cracked before. And he is going to come along with his pocket pair, looking to set mine here. Checking this smoke. Interesting. <laughs> the voice checks dark, oh. and he flops a set. Unfortunately, this is about the worst outcome he could have other than getting set over set. Um, it's going to be tough to get Cage Man to put in any more chips, um, given this board. But when Tom's thinking about what Cage Man's Three betting ranges. It should be a lot of like ace king, ace queen. Nice bluff, you know, more good hands. Lots of hands that he can put the in a lot of chips against. Five of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'll see it on TV. Oh, I get it. Those ones are always reminders to me that yeah, I don't know you, you have to be careful to have about paying to hit there, sets yeah. because sometimes you hit them and you just don't make any more money out of it. You had something better than my hand. I told you which two. You know, he had to call another 2,700 chips there. Yeah. And he hit a set, but only made another 3,000 post flop. I'm going to make feel worse. Yeah. Other than the chips that were in the middle pre flop. Like, you know, I did consider folding pre just because I'm like, we might just go set over set here. But when I saw the ace king five, I'm like, well, if he has ace king, it's going to be a bad, bad day for him. And if he has kings, it's a bad day for me. Oh, well. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much what my reasoning is, uh, or what I was trying to explain right there. And yeah. Tom, uh, you know, fully appreciated it himself. If I tell him the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Final table, Kev, with the pocket pair. Lizard. Ace, jack of spades again on the button. He's going to come along. Ant hasn't played too many hands in the small blind. He's going to call. And we'll go four ways to this flop. I got used to this other one. Yeah. 
Let's see if Lizard takes a stab here on the button. Does not. You see Final Table Cav still in the lead here with his sixes, but it's the voice who's going to fire out. And he's the only one with 0% equity. I had good news early. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to get done. That wasn't the same. <laughs> nice work there. This one's are tough to bluff through because a lot of people's checking range are going to be hands with pair plus gutter that are not going to want to fold the turn. So a hand like that may want to bet the turn and bet the river as well to fold out all those hands. Like queen 10, jack 10, uh, jack 9, stuff like that. That's all happening. Chase is like, bring me my bees. <laughs> I actually went out there and checked on them yesterday. All three made it through the winter. Three? Three hives. <laughs> the beekeeper actually is a beekeeper. Made it. Usually there's about a 50% oh, over the winter, but the winter was really mild. So yeah, it really yeah. yeah, it snowed, what, like once? I mean, barely. <laughs> yeah. So... Great news, the bees made it. The bees made it. The accumulation. Yeah, it's like a... Bacon. Lizard with ace jack again, this time not suited. Oh. Me too. It's all about cows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they don't care. So uh, Here, I got you. Yeah, I'll do that so that they'll be strong when the, the all the flowers and the trees start to bloom. Mm -hmm. So that they're not building up as that's happening. They're already at full strength so that they can fully produce as much honey as possible. Okay. I didn't know we'd be getting uh, bee wisdom, but yes. very happy to hear it. Messengers. Just around the corner. There is a bee store that sells equipment for beekeepers. And talk about a niche market. I mean, to have a brick-and-mortar store for beekeeping, Yeah, you've got to be pretty optimistic. Yeah, yeah. Or you have to find a very vibrant bee community. Yeah. Beekeeping community, not, you know, be actual bees themselves. If I had enough, I would. There's no metals in it. Just got a metal. Still about no. building it up. There's metal and honey. That's true. Metal, they'll tell you. Yes. <laughs> Can you explain? I mean, that's like saying that there's iron in the solar system. I do see the. Re I do. I see the relationship. It makes sense. There's in the processed uh, honey. Yeah, we gotta oh. oh, that's right. Graphics <laughs> trying to catch up here. The voice with Queen Eight. I think the voice actually called. Yeah, he did. Kevin, I, I'm gonna say he doesn't have aces here. Good. <laughs> my guess. It's showing he has aces. I think he does. He. I think he just called the big blind. Trapping? Did I, did I read that wrong? He may be trapping. <laughs> Final table, Kev. I hate you so much. If, if the hand went limped around and Kevin raised, we in hand? I would believe it, I guess. I, I don't think he would just call the big blind. Uh, but, I, I mean, I could be wrong. I, I kind of missed the pre-flop stuff. But I hate you seems so unlikely. <laughs> Oh, so, so much. It's weird. <laughs> Slick Rick, along with Bones, local Austin legendary yeah, card player. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Tonight I'm getting married. <laughs> you hang around long enough, you, people will start to think you're there for a reason. <laughs> Sometimes it's just luck. Yeah, well... No, We've been playing a lot of years, so Lizard with the pocket pair. This time the cell boats gonna come along. Pretty loose open here from Maestro, but it seems like he wants to get after it today. Ooh! Oh, I, 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 I know. I was like, no mother, what? no way. What do you think he was gonna Really? Yeah, I was like, I was like, wow, well, he's really just, I was like, he's really just gonna with his whole stack and just no. Cut and release. That's fair. 
That should be the name of the flop. Yeah. <laughs> Three ways to this flop. There's a 10 for Maestro, but the queen Check. for the tournament director extraordinaire Check. in the ninth seat. All right, here, if you want it, here. <laughs> and he's going all in. Our first all in of the day. That's quite a hefty bet. I wanted to. Blinds are now up. The 7X pod jam for the win. Very checked out. 200, 400, 400 now. I completely understand. Sorry, dog. Yes, my watch. I'm exactly in the same boat. I just need to take it. Can't do it. Just can't do it. That is 100% an analysis hand for Doug to go through. Yeah. Within sure 4.7 seconds. It's going to be a bad podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He does not. I'm not Doug, but I, I concur with that analysis. <laughs> but he took it down. It wasn't. It's not the end of the world. Uh, we took like our first exam, and the like teacher got up there. And, yeah, two years ago. Damn. Sorry. How many years ago? That, at this point, I think that was it's seven or eight years ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got done with the exam. We came back a week it was later. This hand, right? She used yeah, all this right, example so. of what not to do. <laughs> She's like, all right, guys, this is the one is how not to do it. And, and she yeah, forgot. She just straight up showed my name and then just started flipping through it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. He's like, this person did not pass. <laughs> is it, did it raise? Did he raise? <laughs> Maestro with Big Slick. <laughs> Back over to Beekeeper. Beekeeper's going to make the call in the big blind with 5 3. Definitely never challenging it. We got instant replay. Wow. It definitely hit the belt before move. <laughs> That'd be funny if players had like flags and like you, know, you could like throw a flag, challenge it. Like, I, know, I know. I was just thinking like about what's that? Yeah, Clever has a birdie in his pocket, a yellow birdie he throws out when someone does it. Interesting fact about Maestro when he came to work for the Lodge a little over a year ago. Didn't know much about poker at all. Like, damn, I could not do that. And in a short time period, not only did he learn the game, he became proficient enough to qualify and pass like the audition for dealing here at the Lodge, in addition to being the executive producer of the live stream. So in one short year, he really kicked it up a notch on his poker talents. MFA, big slick suited, raises to 1100. And Maestro in the big blind. There's what we talk about defending. I just realized how difficult it is to fold out a turn. Maestro <laughs> picks up a couple <laughs> spades for his flush draw. Now he's not going anywhere. Yeah, but people don't pay attention. Oh. I was going to say, though, that in my spot right here, it's kind of awkward, like, the way that the... Let's get someone eliminated so you can have a, a square. <laughs> I have a square. It's fine. But I, I did think about folding. MFA it. comes along. MFA in good shape. It's Maestro going to continue. And he checks. Did you just do a PSA? Maestro looking for a spade or a seven. It does not come. So ace king. Bluff here. Goes check, check, and MFA is going to win with her big slick. Oh, oh my God, God. I finally won again. <laughs> finally. I feel like King 10. Jeez. If I had lost my spot to Governor, I would have folded. She needed one. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. I needed awesome. one, too. Why do you think oh, I did? Hey, <laughs> I was ready to ship the turn. <laughs> ship the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see what we got. Three, two. Uh, that was just a big. Give me the hold. Good. Holding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Muck that hand. <laughs> One. One. <of. laughs> 
He's not at his seat. Oh, so he's killing that man, right? Like, uh, absolutely. No, <laughs> what arm length? Yeah, I mean, what are we doing here if we're not killing that hand? That was <laughs> Anthony really cracking down. Yes. <laughs> I didn't mean it's tough when the tournament director is actually <laughs> playing as well. I wonder if he'd call a penalty on himself. But I intend. Oh, we'll go off intention. <laughs> yeah, can we make all of our rulings based off intention from now on? <laughs> Gray areas. Let's do gray areas. Let's go. A gray area tournament. That's a wacky weekend right there. <laughs> I like how uh, well, I the voice is playing. With He's uh, <laughs> kind of getting after it, right, fighting for so pots. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm waiting for the cash. Of, like, line, like, he definitely here, probably at this table. I'm never going to say, well, if you're Experience-wise. He seems like he has the most experience. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Can we do the cash game tournament? In, in tournaments, we'll for sure. The straddle, those bomb pies. Somebody actually asked me. Shape. Well, no, somebody actually asked me for a straddle tournament. Like, but, I mean, optional? it should be all cash game rules. It has to be like, optional, right? Because yeah, it would be a, you, it's you, not yeah. No, it would be... I mean, it's a what if after a ridge closes, you can cash out your stack at any time? For what cash out tournament? I, 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 ran one of like them. I ran one of them before, cash out. Be fun. All the, all the big stacks just like cash out, and then there's no money left in the yeah. price. Oh, no, you, you're, 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 your pennies on a dollar when you're cashing out. Yep. And you... No, you allocate you allocate a certain amount of the prize pool that yeah. can be cursed out, yeah. and then you. Too much, too much. Bro, oh, three oh, two cards. Spring cold. Yeah. <laughs> and it's normally only like it's normally only like ten percent of the really overall, overall prize pool can be cashed out. That, the Cowboys for Cage Man raises the three thousand, and how much is, Lizard how much the chips are worth. Yeah. With a decision here with Ace Ten, he's gonna fold. Get fold, get fold. No, no, thank you. So interesting. What would you like me to do? To note, okay. Ant Anthony, the tournament director extraordinaire, was involved and in working at the Venetian when really deep stack tournament poker was invented, and it was thought of by the, <laughs> by his group that uh, basically in the old days bones when i first started going out to the world series if you bought into a fifteen hundred dollar tournament you know how many chips you got fifteen hundred you got fifteen hundred chips so you can't make a lot of moves with fifteen hundred chips so deep stack poker was born and i think the players it's one of the great innovations that and the big blind annie i think are the two Great innovations over the last 15 or so years. <laughs> Your hair says it all. Yeah, I, I think the first main event I played, I got 10,000 in chips. Yeah. And I definitely remember playing some uh, $1,500 tournaments for 1,500. Oh, absolutely. I definitely remember. You but just can't, you can't overcome it. I mean, you can't make any mistakes. Right. Early, you know? Yeah. Whereas with a bigger stack, you could, you know. There's also blind inflation as well. Back then, the blinds were, you know, 25, 25, or something like right. that. Now you start off, you know, 100, 200. Right. Uh, you definitely start off with more big blinds, but uh, I always thought it was kind of silly to play tournaments where the blinds. Like I've played tournaments where the blinds started off at like 501k. Right. Which is just, you know, ridiculous. Right. Um, it just seems silly and uh, basically pretending that you have these crazy deep stacks when you actually don't. But. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, too, but she's got other I think Anthony's yeah, done a, an amazing job uh, structuring the tournaments here. Um, well, some of the tournaments, that wacky weekend of poker, I don't know if you got any, on any of that, but to me, <laughs> as somebody who just loves the game, that was just everybody had a smile on their face. Nobody was wearing headphones or sunglasses. It was just fun. Said, okay. The joy of poker, the wacky weekend of poker. Oh, you know, Can't wait that. till that comes back. I said, go ahead. It was an open invite. Yeah, I, I had. I only played the. I played the deuces, and then I played. Clearly chip dumping. I think. I think it was just deuces, actually. Uh, but I, I had a blast. Everyone had a great time. Yeah. Heads up, Maestro and the Cage Man. And how about this? Cage Man flops Broadway. Three thousand. Three thousand. Uh-oh, Maestro. Oh, my goodness. Maestro makes the call. Oh, my God. Maestro, what are we doing? Got a backdoor flush draw. Seems a little optimistic, but, you know. Run it five times. Three boards. All right, chop it up. Jack the chop. Oh. 
When you put, right, the, well, when you put it down, it's like, we're not running. Nice double for Cage Bay there. Maestro okay. down to fumes. 17-6. How much? 17-6. Jesse's always had it. 17-15. 17-17. And a huge pot. 42,900. You had you not said the, the three bet thing. <laughs> no, I mean, that's not really in my three bet nah. range, to be honest with you. Cage Man okay. seems to have brought three pairs not of sunglasses. Not, yes. Cage Man like just likes happy. merch. Look at, they're all branded. Does he have a, uh, like an account on Etsy or something? No, he goes to a local spot. There's the player stacks. Cage Man now, the chip leader, 42-9. And the short stack, the one, the only, Maestro Matt Sweeney with 14 big blinds. Not quite in panic mode yet. I remember the last time I threw that the same person three times in 20 minutes. And then got a pull double. <laughs> well, no, I called one time. <laughs> that was a very quick call with Ace-8. Yes. Um, so <laughs> he, he probably put it like... If he wants to raise there, he could probably make it a bit smaller and then probably sh shouldn't call off the last 7K, but it's, it's not like... The, the pot's are already pretty huge. Uh, I mean, I, I would fold, but I would also make it a smaller raise so I could, I could fold. You know, not happily, but, you know, without wondering if I was getting the right price or not. All he does is I'm kind of surprised to see Beekeeper not bet the flop here. Cheek. Ace Queen High. Mm. Can I have my cards back? <laughs> Can I have my cards back? 10 3. <laughs> you folded 10 3? <laughs> no one cares what you fold. No one cares. Hey, I'm trying to be like everybody else. Yeah. Oh my god, I folded this. <laughs> I think that was Kevin saying that no one cares what you folded. So. I didn't fold. That, I would have won. Oh, Tom. Okay. I appreciate I him voicing what we are, we're all thinking. Folks, if you want to play on the watch live stream, get in touch with Skull Mike. That's his third grade picture right there on his Instagram or Twitter. At Skull Mike Poker on his Instagram or Twitter. Or email him at Skull Mike at thelodgepokerclub.com. And folks... We're always looking for people. Let them know what days you're going to be in town. And he'll start the conversation that way. LC with the pocket pair. I swear I'm not a weak player. Stop hammering on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hmm? saw Jesse three by eight three on. times. I'm defending. I'm probably check folding, but which is weakness. But. You guys are going to check on the side. <laughs> One hour seven check dark. It probably I won't check. be a twelve minute break. It'll probably be a five minute break. Enough of this. It'll be a kickoff break. <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be a twelve minute. Final table break. Kev hits <laughs> middle pair here on the flop. I mean we're coloring up we at, we do color up the uh, black. Yeah. Nine hundred it's the new structure. Oh we got the new structure. It's the new structure. Oh. Big fan. <laughs> wait, wait, what's the what's the difference? So to get the black to get the black off uh, so there's no more in this 20-minute level. There's no more six. If yes. LC decides to bluff here. So, but you have to think of it I have from an, an orbit stand, an M value standpoint. Six twelve. Bang. Oh, cool. Six twelve twelve is an orbit of three. Good defense. Yeah. Got yeah. So I got moved, a little upset. I moved yeah, the, you got to take a stand. The people are picking on me. <laughs> we color off the black after. He's my next hurt. Break, yeah. And you come back to one K, one K, one K. So it still keeps that three. 3K M intact. Got it. So. <laughs> what? 1K, 1K, 1K. No. He's not in the blind. No, it's just he's the blind. No, he's about 7, 14, oh, oh, come on, Kessler. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> Maestro's going all in here with the slicky Ricardo, King Four suited. No, that, that's your uh, that's your hand, King Four. Yeah, I, I played it one time, and they named it after me. Okay. I see the uh, painting in the office. Yeah. And the lizard again with Ace Jack. This guy has Ace Jack every time. He's gonna call. Voice is already folded. And there's an all in from MFA with the ladies. 
<laughs> no influencing action, sir. I know. <laughs> He's trying to break I'm new. I'm the new guy. What's the total? 17, 9, 17. Big hand for a sandwich bet here, Rick. Isn't Big hand. Like, you had 17, 6. 17, 6, yeah. I thought you were full of shit. <laughs> oh, Understandable. I look like someone who'd be full of shit and not have the nuts, but I had the nuts. Yeah, you didn't even have a pair. I think he's going to lay this down. There's three people with Ace Jack about the nuts. He, yeah. He does. Ooh. Good fold. Added value to yeah, the lot. Dead money, baby. Let's see if my sword can triple up here. Triple up plus. Again with the King yeah, 4 suited. This is low King 4. <laughs> King 4. The King 4 is just. <laughs> just That's the mic. Like, yeah. King 4 is yeah. Oh my god. Alright, let's try to get down there. Jack, you had your hands. Come on. Uh, <laughs> hey! Queen. Yeah, I don't think you're in good shape to get that joke. Queen. Well, there goes the clubs. Wait, let me do the math on it. Three for the yeah. side. Oh. King. Okay, good. Maestro. <laughs> oh, Queen. Does oh, not <laughs> hit the king, and Maestro right. is going to be the first to be eliminated. <laughs> Why didn't you call? <laughs> and I feel a little bit bad because we kind of <laughs> excitedly told Maestro to play today. And he was all excited, and he's the first one out. <laughs> yeah. Down to eight. Sitting on my lap. Yeah. Oh, you don't, don't have to do the card in each spot. Anymore? Outrageous! <coughs> so, do the card is anyone spot? moving chairs? The chairmanator? Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> or is that just Seth? Progress. Uh, anyone moving chairs is the chairmanator. So today, Mickey will be the chairmanator. Just the mic. Overs or batteries? There's Liz. What do you want? Damn, really all. Liz working audio today, and are we pausing while you do that? Producing. Oh, okay. I actually thought when I saw the lizard as the oh, tag for one of the players that it was going to be Liz. That she was, yeah. Mm -hmm. She says that they, she used to be known as lizard <laughs> back in high school. Okay. Oh, boy. We came up with the lizard of Lodge. Kind of a takeoff on Wizard of Oz for oh, Josh okay. because he just is everywhere. He does a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Nobody knows exactly what he does, but we all agree he does it well. I I've seen him floating around for years, <laughs> and I think he's let me into like my, my box a few times. He and does anything that falls through the cracks, that's the lizard's job. Yeah. <laughs> he always seems to be on his way to some various meeting. I <laughs> but I'm not. Aside from the start of the stream, you haven't said anything. That <laughs> is, is. Heads up. A couple players with gut shot opportunities. There's the king for the lizard. Yeah. Why would you be you flop Broadway. Why would you be disappointed with yourself? No, no, that. Oh, <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'd love to say that I reached into the deck and pulled those cards out. What are you disappointed of? Myself. If I, if I give details, then you guys are going to be even more disappointed in me. Two minutes away from the blinds going up. They'll be going up to 300, 600, 600 in two minutes. First place gets 1,800. Second place, 900. Third place, nothing. Good day, sir. I like the design of these. Yeah, the design, the look, just everything about them. Ant will raise it with 3-4 suited to 1,100. Voice comes along with his hockey sticks, MFA. Yo. Also will come along. I've made worse calls. <laughs> Cageman says, I made worse calls. We'll call with the 5-6 offsuit. He hasn't made too many worse calls than that one. That one's pretty rough. But a couple hearts for MFA here. And a set for the voice. This one should uh, get us some action. Deuce, deuce, mother goose. Hell yeah. <laughs> 
second set of the day for The Voice. And I haven't seen flop to set in six months. There's the boat, and it's over. The Voice. I am in the door around here. I don't know. Part here would be disaster for MFA Cowboy hat. on the river. a lot of uh, old WrestleManias lately, and that Shawn Michaels wears a kind of hat similar to that. Man, it was good. <laughs> Back in the day? It was so good. Like, She's going to come along a hard here, Bones, disaster for MFA. Like 32. Yeah. Just really no heart. No heart. I, I was at the Royal, 97 Royal Rumble in San Antonio. Yeah. I got to go to that. 97. Yeah. I, I think you, know was, you weren't was, born yet. Yeah. I think they just <laughs> recently had an event at El San Antonio. Mundo. Yeah, that was one last year. Another uh, that was a Royal Rumble. Rumble. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was Royal Rumble. I yeah. thought it was, they had, uh, thought it was SmackDown. No, they did the Royal Rumble. No, no, no. They just SmackDown on yeah. the same weekend. Yeah, it was the Royal Rumble. But there was uh, two years ago. 15,000. Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. I knew Kevin was a WrestleMania historian. I remember when we went to... I used to like oh, wrestling. So when we went to, to back in the day, Spurs game. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I saw the, the average show poster. Or yeah, well, the average was sold by the, MFA. Yeah. You break no, the, the first Spurs game I ever went to. Mm -hmm. so you break the Memorial Day Miracle. Yeah, but I, I had it there. Sean, I had it there. Yeah. Three from the hard like, comes. He didn't oh <laughs> man, hard thank God that hard doesn't come. Eighty three. I had no idea what he's talking about. You're the one that first served championship. No, no, wait. Yeah, 99. It was 99. The year they won. Smooth sailing for the voice so far. I guess we're calling in errors. So he's relating the error. Yeah. Stupid error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just bring up Taylor Swift's tour? Ooh. I would have checked it. You can watch that on Max right now. You don't have to spend billions of dollars to go. But if you had a jack, you'd be able to get it. I agree on the rubber. I guess he really, like, did he really hit any of those? I didn't like it. It was a King High Hearts, maybe? But you just didn't realize, like, there was literally six different headliners. Now there's just like... Roman Reigns, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like you had so many big guys. Cageman with the ladies. That could be in the main event. At He's going to raise to 3,500. Definitely spoiled. And Ant, the original... See if you know, like Vince Ant plays like the kids anymore, here and just puts it all in. That was a year ago. <laughs> Going to come along. Ace five suited is the new big slick. You pegged for the jammer fold. I was. That's what I was thinking about. You want to talk about a guy that worked his way up to the top? Yeah. yeah. Help that the daughter's owner. Yeah. Life. <laughs> you? Yeah. Watch Are you? Oh, DX. Yeah. We got to We got to catch up. Oh, <laughs> Short stack Anthony with just 12,800. Chip leader, The Voice, with 56,900 chips. Part two. Part two. Channering. Channering. Our two guys are pretty close. Kevin has 23. Those are guys 21.6. Yeah. Now, did you, you pick the final table, Kev? I did. Yeah. I did. have a stutter. Um. Tom was my other choice, but yeah. Well. <laughs> what president used that excuse? Like Kevin. Well, Ronald Reagan. See if he can hang in there. I don't know. <laughs> what excuse? What excuse? It's the voice. He said I'll use the presidential excuse. I was thought I've never yeah. heard it. How about the famous uh, thing? We have that Hi. saying in Texas. Tell me what. Remember the shame on you. Yeah. Tell yeah. <laughs> <Call> me twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how it's said. Oh, presidential caps. Let's just... Is it me and Tomas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking know. about the president of Amco. What are you guys, what are you guys talking about? No, Kevin, Kevin would make a good photo. Double A, MC. There's the set. Another set for the voice. This is third one, Boot. Uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't. Boot. Bones. I mean, are you kidding? This is another boat for the voice. Too much pressure. Yeah. No action, though. I was just so nervous. I mean, honestly, when I tell you that I haven't flopped the set in months, 
I'm telling you, it should happen every, what, eight, nine times? Three sets in a single table sit and go. It's not happening for me, Bones. It's just not happening. Have you tried uh, saging yourself? Saging myself? Yeah. I have not been to the sage store. You wave it over yourself and you get rid of all the bad energy. Have you tried going to a fortune teller? No. They can they can tell you if like something's wrong with your aura. Man, I need to do this stuff. That's what the pros do. How in the world do I not flop sets? It's like... <laughs> have you tried manifesting that? Jay Wynn swears by it. Jay Wynn does. I, I'm going to have to do some of this stuff. I'm lost in the wilderness. LC with the, pot, the tanks here. And sorry I called you Boots. I know. I, boots, I get it all the time. I mean, it's just too close. I get it all the time. We look so much alike. That people, oh, yeah, people just confuse us. You look identical. Like twins. Are you, uh, you seem like the kind of guy that would enjoy the movie Major League. Oh, yeah. Have you tried sacrificing a chicken? <laughs> no, I haven't. I mean, hey. Jabu? Yeah. That was a good movie. Me? Chick. Beat. 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 Do we have Oreos? That's a genuine question. What is it going to cost me to get a trailer yeah. right now? <laughs> With some masking tape that says, do not touch. <laughs> and then whip them at grandma. Elsie's <laughs> in great shape here. I'm surprised to see check back there. in your young poker career, have you watched Rounders yet? <laughs> <laughs> just checking. She's like, Tom makes me every weekend. I was going to say, we do watch it every weekend. I'm just checking. We watch it on mute with subtitles. You get the full experience of the film. I thought you just watched it on mute without subtitles. You just literally say the lines. You're just quoting the whole thing. The whole time, it's like Matt Damon. Lauren with the, or Elsie with the tricky line here. Think she's going to get paid off? I have to imagine Lauren's going to bluff at some point today. Not this hand. Not, right not today, <laughs> Satan. Not today. She says, not right now. I did it uh, to Josh first hand. Yeah, keep convincing us of that. Yeah. Who's your favorite character from Rounders? Here's my question. Oh. Ooh, good question. How can you bet the pot in a no-limit game? I, you know exactly what it is. I will say... <laughs> it's a private game. It's a private game. Maybe he knows exactly what the I will say <laughs> Kanish. Really? Who's your favorite? Oh. Kanish is up there. Way uh, out of time, too. It came out in KGV, probably. Yeah. I'm a big KGV guy. Oh, yeah. I, I joke a lot about how I felt like my career started off and I was Mike McDee, and then eventually you stick around long enough to become Kanish. Hopefully, right? right? Hopefully you don't become Worm. Right. Um, but yeah, eventually you become Kanish. Otherwise, you know, you go broke too many times. One of the great <laughs> mysteries, as we see the voice in MFA going heads up once again. I don't remember any of these. are movies. Lucky this is Eric Bauman. Poker movies. Eric One of the great mysteries is why they he, like, never he had rounders to but he has no money because he's also a degenerate and he like sounds like so I, i've heard a few podcasts and with uh koppelman i think it's koppelman yes and he's kind of talking about how they they've always kind of talked about running it again and they may they may have written a script for it but just it never got going it feels like the, the landscape changes so often in poker that you run the risk of it becoming dated they get down to the by the end, time the, the, uh, uh, the, the movie comes out, yeah, but like Rodgers itself is so timeless. <laughs> Twenty over twenty-five years now it's been, and. <clears throat> I always said the script would be, it's been 25 years, Mike McDermott has won three World Series of Poker bracelets, Worm is caught up in an online poker scandal, That sounds right. and the girlfriend is a high, I, I never understood the girlfriend character in that movie, I, I didn't think that was needed at all, it was a wasted character. So I disagree, simply for the reason that I feel like poker players, Sometimes nothing is enough.
<laughs> Almost all of us have, have dated someone who wasn't supportive of our career, or uh, know someone who wasn't supportive of their career. I feel like, uh, what's your name, Joe? Yeah, I feel like Joe kind of represents uh, the civilian kind of naysayer who thinks that it's all gambling, who thinks that... I can see that. Uh, I, I, like, she is one of the more universally disliked characters in, I guess, modern cinema. For people who've watched that movie, I think almost everybody dislikes her. But I, I think she's necessary just as a foil for Mike, other than Worm and KGB. Yeah. It, it, I think it also humanizes him a bit. Uh, He's waxing all where like you realize that you have this gambling part of your life where you, you always want to be in action or whatever, but you still have these civilian relationships that, you know, can be destroyed through gambling, whether it's reasonably or unreasonably. Yeah. No, 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 it was Jen, it was Jen. He, like, Good thoughts. He's like, you have these three cards, then those two cards, and he's like, the last card, well, I could have a diamond or a spade, and just flip a coin. True. Stu was better at pie than he was at poker, or um, gin, gin, gin than he yeah. was at poker. Yeah, gin had a lot less luck in it. Elsie again with the pocket I pair calls with her Gretzky hand. I'm a whiskey guy. <laughs> Beekeeper with big slick. <laughs> I do, I do. And we'll go three ways. <laughs> actually, four ways to this flop. Beekeeper smashes that. If Cageman gets in trouble here with his weak ace, that's kind of the the problem with defending weak aces against early position raises is that a lot of times when you flop an ace, you're just going to be in this really tough spot where you're going to hope right to call down and bluff catch. <laughs> There's the check mark, top two for beekeeper. That was a bad card for me. <laughs> So, Bones and I have given our favorite character, Chat. I put it to you. Who is your favorite character in Rounders? It, it was not a commercial hit. It was huge in the poker community. But as far as a movie, money-wise, wasn't the commercial hit that... Uh, <laughs> they probably would have wanted f to, to create a sequel. So you're a Boston guy, right? Yes. So uh, Bill Simmons just did a podcast. Uh, they have a series called The Rewatchables. Yeah. And they, they watch uh, movies back that are you know, 20 or 30 years old. They'll do like you know, Rambo or whatever. And they did Rounders pretty recently. And uh, he kind of discussed that about how it kind of caught on in the uh, HBO and TNT kind of replays when they get syndicated and so in like the early 2000s, like you would always see, you know, rounders on like HBO2 or whatever. Right. And then people kind of, they caught on along with a poker boom, you know, which started in like 2003, 2004 or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was kind of a box office flop. But uh, Ant has gone all in here with some Broadway cards. Beekeeper's contemplating this and he's going to lay it down. Ooh. Give it a flip, I mean. Yikes. Yeah, those are pretty tough spots for, for uh beekeeper when someone shoves and you have someone shoves like twenty blinds and you have you know queen jack suited and they shove from like middle position or whatever. It's like you have such a, a nice hand and you really want to play and you have you have a ton of equity against a lot of hands, but you can't really call off twenty big blind shoves. I can't help but rem be remembered of we were watching Free Guy, and you know the one character who just oh. in Free Guy. <laughs> You're watching the blue shirt sit and go. All these folks are managers here at Lodge Card Club. Against her will. More. 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 Wow. More. Uh. Final table, Kev yeah, is going to place the race here with Ace Queen. Turn him into an honorary inhabitant of <laughs> to twenty-eight hundred. Population two. <laughs> yeah. All right, we already Don't gave the, we already gave the game away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once you make that that statement, you go I ah then raise then it's you know. One player has been eliminated. We're down to eight. Top two will get paid.
The, the speed you ever read it? Definitely amazing. No. Every time. <laughs> Not Wait, read? Is that, like, is that like a required reading thing? What? Probably. The Crucible. I read it in high school, I think. I read The Crucible. When they're crushing the one guy with the boulders and he's like, more weight. I don't remember that. I don't think I've ever read that one. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, about the witch. Salem Anthony witch Crawford. trials. <laughs> You're a witch. <laughs> I barely remember Lord like the uh, Lord of the Flies, <laughs> like a streetcar nope. named Desire and those other. Books I know you know that's not true. Lord of the Flies. What was the one with Holden Caulfield? Like, no, Catcher in the Rye. Uh, something with a boulder. Someone gets killed with a boulder. Oh, right? Piggy. Piggy, yeah, Piggy. Oh, Piggy, that's right. Yeah, Catcher in the Rye. Uh, Kevin and I have an honorary workout. Guys are out here uh, spoiling Lord of the Flies for us. I remember, like, I remember like some characters' names, but I don't really remember the story. Because the King's <laughs> birthday is on May 13th. Caulfield. The King? Lightweight baby, Ronnie Coleman. And he he still lives in Arlington. Metroflex, mismatched plates, rusty, loud music. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> the way it should be. Broken bathrooms. Music's played on the CDs. <laughs> it's not a real gym if you can't get tetanus. Have you ever heard of someone like that? What do you, what do you, I'm not feeling all that guy. Yeah. Lizard's coming along yeah, with a gut shot. And, touch their chips. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren LC hits. I played at the Taj. <laughs> I got you know, her king that. on the river. I was up to date on my tetanus shot once every 10 years. Yeah, he's rabies too. <laughs> and here comes the rays from the lizard trying to take it down. Wow. Raises to 4,000. You go to throw one in, it just slips. <laughs> Will this get through? This is a tough spot for LC. She has a pretty good hand to call with. Oh. And there's a smile from the lizard saying, oops. I was trying to pull off the blocker. Damn it, you're the king. Very nice call by LC there. I was like, does he really have a jacket? Probably. You could have had a better king. I don't know. Yeah. Because the decks were so expensive in the Indian Reservation, they didn't want to waste money, so they would clean their decks. Next person. Remember that place? <laughs> well, the Taj's chips were so bad. I mean, look, it was, it's one thing to be able to get 21 chips in a barrel, but when you can get, like, 23... <laughs> 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 they're, they're almost on 23 chips. Right? <laughs> That's how the Bellagio $10 chips are. Yeah, the Bellagio $10 chips are rough shape last time I saw them. You could shake the rack and fit 21 or 22 in them. <laughs> they just turn to dust. <laughs> Go to bed 50 and one of them just shatters and <laughs> yep. disintegrates. Sorry, you checked. I, 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 no, 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 I didn't see anything. 40, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say, if he somehow ended up pulling those chips back. <laughs> yeah. This will be a tough spot when he gets around to beekeeper. I am also all in. Open ender for Ant. He goes all in. Cage man with two pair. He's all in. Miracle card, Clay. Seven. Oh. <laughs> Ant has some outs looking for a five or a ten. <laughs> that means you're getting there, though, for sure. Oh. Ant already standing up, no. looking for a five or a ten. I, I neutralized it. I neutralized it. Yeah. Does not come, and there's the boat for Cage Man, and we've got another elimination. Hi, Sam, sir. Thank you, sir. Is that a Tom approved show? Yeah, absolutely. That money's going in. Nikki on Terminator duties today is going to escort Ant out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we we nicknamed the original Terminator. I actually have quite a bit of stuff to do. Was Brittany. And Brittany was doing her job so well one night <laughs> that she actually beat the player out of the room who got eliminated with the chair. <laughs> so he nicknamed her the Terminator. Now it's just. A moniker that all game hosts receive. But Brittany loved that name. She she was all into it. <laughs> Down to seven players. <laughs> Did she have any confrontations with T1000? You'll see on TV later. <laughs> no. 
It's funny. You know what's funny? I didn't consider just calling. Yeah. For a while, I was like, I either have the three better The dynamic has been set. I could have just called here, actually. <laughs> One of the hands that I had previously three bet with you was the hand that I just folded. So I, I, when Very you looked at me and I looked down at that hand, I was like, <laughs> I should definitely just fucking three bet. Who? But I, I felt like you had a better hand. How the times have changed. The hand I just had was a hand that Jesse did three bet you with. <laughs> and I. Jeez, you guys <laughs> pounding me. I fly the ace queen twice and jack one, the ace jack once, so. It's but it's funny, like, I didn't think that, man, I could probably just call here with this hand. I don't have to three better fold. <laughs> so you're going down the list of premiums, making sets, just making all these big Yeah, ties. doing my best. Governor doesn't mess around. No. He's not the mayor. All right, he's the governor. The clock is going to determine that the blinds will go up once again every 20 minutes. Oh, my God, I haven't even looked yet. Walk it out. Hey. Wow, Jinx. Nice. Oh, that was way good. <laughs> Blinds are now 488. I was very disappointed to see uh, on the replay that Sean Mates didn't have the mayor as his. Uh, I know, there. I know. Hmm. That was quite the hand. Both players flopping two pair. We're talking about. A big hand recently added to the clips of the watch. Is it, are y'all cold? Yeah. Social media. King six forehand. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting colder. Sense. I was more a little warmer before. We don't have to. Achieve. I, I think I you catch the miracle two outer, and then yeah. the river comes, and crushes your soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I you swear. Like, nice that stream room. I, I don't know. It, it feels like the Twilight Zone. Every time I play in there, there's something ridiculous. Something yeah. happens. I mean. And every now and then we'll get a stream where you feel like, yeah, it was it was what you normally see, but most of the time some crazy stuff happens in the stream room. Huh? A lot because I think people. Do you play any different when you're on a stream versus? That's a that's a cool one. I yes, but not like I'll play a few hands a bit more. Aggressively, sometimes, like I, I, I've definitely had some some spots where I've gotten okay. stacked, and yeah. I, I can feel the depth. Uh, yeah, stacked people on stream where I would I would probably we take a different line off stream, sure. but uh, you know, I'm also aware of the fact that we're playing, but we're still trying to to entertain a bit. Right, and right. I, I'll if I think something is reasonable and a bit more on the aggressive action side, then I'll. I'll do it on stream, right. whereas I may yeah, you know, do it half the time stream. off stream and not do yeah. it half the time. I, you know, you're, you're still aware that the cameras are there. And right. I, I don't make any, I, don't, I like to think that I don't make any yeah, like, drastic punts where you know, I'm just giving away money on stream. Right. Because, you know, it, it's, it's still, still money. It's still money, <laughs> and I, I still think that there is yeah. a lot of entertainment value in seeing someone try to play well. Right. Like I, but for my own personal thing, I prefer seeing people trying to play as well as they can rather than people just, you know, calling off a third of their stack with, like, oh, king three off or whatever. Right. Like, it, I, I get why people enjoy it, but, but for me, I like, I, I'm all about the competition. Like, I like seeing people try to play well. So you're not, you're not a big fan of the VPIP stats? No, I think, <laughs> I think it's silly. Like, and... The, there's so much noise in those stats where, like, if you're playing, if I'm playing in a game and Chaz and Bulldog are both on my left, like, I can't play all that loose because they're just going to three-bet me nonstop. Right. If they're both on my right, I can't get into that many pots because they're opening a lot, so I either have to call or three-bet or whatever. Um, it, when you're playing more aggressive games, it, it's much harder to put chips in the pot. If right. you're playing more passive games, then yeah, you can like limp ace two suited under the gun or whatever, and it'll just limp around a lot, or someone will make it three x or whatever, and it's not a big deal. Uh, but if you're playing people who just put a lot of pressure on you, it it becomes very costly to try to keep your v pip up. Um, so I think like just looking at that stat alone is 
you can't look at it without context. Right. And you also can't, you're getting these very small samples. Like right now we're 51 hands in. Um, you can just get dealt three playable hands in 51 hands. The Terminator. And you're not, it's not like you're only playing 6% oh, oh. of hands. Oh, nice. There's the straight. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay. Hold that thought till be, between this hand. And the cage man is going to continue firing out. And the voice. Here comes the boom. And that is a rare eight because somebody folded pocket eights. All in. And there's the all in. Boom. Oh, governor, I was bluffing. I mean, I have a draw to the nuts, but the gut shot. All right. Nice uh, hand. Nice hand. Thank you, sir. Oh. And nice play. Nice catch by the voice. So yeah, getting back governor. to your thoughts. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, so I think looking at, at VPIP without context is basically pointless. Um, and that you have such a small sample size over the course of um, one stream. Right. Um, you know, if, if you play online poker or whatever and you play a few tables, 50 hands is a couple of minutes. Right. right? It's, not, it's not unfathomable that you go a couple of minutes. This is, what are we... Uh, I made three eighths on the turn. Hour and a half into this? Yeah. It, it's not an unfathomable to go card down in an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that stat in general is. Should have ripped flop. I just didn't want to. Well, you're uh, meaningless. I, no, I, over the 10 in a vacuum. I probably would have just ripped it. Um, I, I think like, you, you, you bring valid points to your not, poker not, arguments. No, I know. And I just, you that's probably what I should have done. Are very persuasive. <laughs> I like that. Well, I mean, like, I get, I get why you have them, right? It, it's a graphic to show how active somebody is. Right. But there's so much that is left out of that number. Um, that one will be interesting for me to see. But, that. yeah, I mean, I, it has, like, I understand why it's there. I just don't think that you can make any assessments off it. Unless you see someone with, like, a 60% VPIP. Yeah. And they're obviously playing a ton of hands. Um, yeah, that is your thing. You know. Could have been. And been if they're winning and playing it, like... Honestly, one of the most impressive things yeah, about Big Daddy Chaz is that his VPIP is always high, Jack's and he wins hard. doing it, which right. is extremely hard to do, especially in tough lineups. I'd be super impressed if you had one pair there. So, you know, I have a ton of respect for the way that he like that. puts in a bunch of action just, and I still plays very well. I see no heart. Um, I, in my opinion, I guys, think guys like Bulldog, there, uh, a ton of respect for him as a player because oh, he gives so much action like, and still oh, plays incredibly well. I didn't, it's just Unreal. been sitting here. I There's not even any alcohol in that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Sorry. First time opening it's, a, a it's sparkling water, beverage? Mostly. Shake it up. It's a sparkling <laughs> lemon thing. Really yeah, sabotaged by the host. The, 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 the sparkling aspect. LC spilling on the felt. Yeah. Party foul. In case you didn't know. <laughs> wow, they told me I would be banned from the lodge permanently if I spilled on that felt. Yes. So Depends what it is. A little water, a little you know, have a droplets drink. of water, it's fine. Red wine, not so much. I'm amazed that Boots hasn't spilled red wine oh on my this God. table. Yeah. But you just got your bell rung, so yeah. you're a little... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the result of that hand. I was more like Tom was going to call the turn, and then I could jam the river... Hey, whether or not I hit the gut Tom's shot pulling away here. I was looking to hit the gut shot and then jam the river. That's a great you know, plan. <laughs> you know, that, was, that was the ideal scenario. Hit and bet. I, yeah. But I was definitely jamming one way or another. <laughs> and then you find your... <laughs> That's where my head was going. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to sing it. But... Okay. Okay. No, I had to bet no, small no, enough where I could still effectively jam. Walk it out. Hey. You already got a walk last time, didn't you? I need one more. <laughs> if I get 10-3 off again. Huge shout out to the production crew, killing it once again. Our great moderators, Yoda and VW Bug. Thank you on this Friday. Coming to the end of March, just weeks away from me jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. I think it'll probably conclude at some point. Mm -hmm. At some point, yeah. <laughs> Getting a little nervous. Ain't gonna lie. A little nervous.
Oh, there is a 500-1000 level. Players know that production is catching up mm. or whatever they need to Put do. a buffering symbol, just buffering. I like the awkwardness. <laughs> What's that? I like the awkwardness. Okay. <laughs> Don't say anything, just it's, wait. That's, so, that's <laughs> my least favorite. What are you part. doing? Really? Check to you. Just sitting there? Yeah, it's like, I'm like, I figured okay, you would revel in it. You just got 6,000 in the middle just sitting there waiting for a fly off. And it's like, <laughs> One guy in the hands wondering, like, why did I just put in 3K with these five off, yeah. dude? Right. Sitting there, like, stealing on this, waiting yeah. to find out what the swap is going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ace nine. Yeah. Back. One more look before you. Yeah. yeah. Before you, yeah. I was like, did I? Yeah. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> that was a dumb move. <laughs> <laughs> One fold. One fold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you play standard in short stack poker? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Nerd. Nice. That was offensive. <laughs> I, I can feel your offensive, your offendedness. <laughs> I can feel your offensive. <laughs> it would have felt pretty bad because I, I didn't look at my hand. It would have felt pretty bad if I looked down at like yeah. two aces or yeah. Oh, <laughs> my oh, 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 bad. <laughs> but in, I thought it could happen. It, it could. It, <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't start to kiss me, so I'm safe. I wouldn't. Not interested in that, but. Well, it's not over. Now he's not interested in it? Fuck, I can't catch a break. Two dimes. Okay. <laughs> All in. All in from the cage man with his jacks. Now you're getting pounded. Now, well, no, I, I've been getting pounded. <laughs> now you're getting Cage man's really punishing pounded. Kevin today. I had it that time, Kevin. I didn't. Although he's pretty much had it every time. Some form of it. Never had it once against you. That's actually the strongest hand I've had that I've 3-bit you with. I think. 7-9 suited. <laughs> Dang. No, I have pocket jacks. You lie good. Come on now. No, I, I swear on anything. Lie a little better than that. <laughs> you pick the topic and I'll swear on it. Your fanhood of the Vegas Golden Knights. I swear on both the fanhood of the Vegas Golden Knights and the New York Knights. Oh, yeah, 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 right. I forgot where we were. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a week. 16. He went to 16? Tell you yeah, what, I'll see. If I oh, have pocket jacks that hand, I will never make another piece of Lodge merch. <laughs> because you already have enough. <laughs> You'll make the Lodge Card Club merch. Right. Don't look for loopholes. Uh, Big fucking. All variants. Place. All variants. <laughs> Something about these cards is you feel like you're more likely to get dealt a good hand. <laughs> Ace Jack. I can see it. <laughs> Lizard's going to take it down with a better kicker. The bad hand. Ace Jack again. Yeah, he's had Ace Jack a ton. Ridiculous and not I mean, he made four sets and had a ton of Ace Jacks. <laughs> It just and feels that somehow way. I did yeah. not hit a set on like six of them. I don't know. I'm just, I'm Unreal. Just, yeah. <laughs> Something wrong with this. So, ten, so 
ton of pocket pairs. Yeah, I've had a lot of pocket pairs. Yeah, and the deuces but through six range. <laughs> two have been eliminated. Seven remain. We'll pay the top two. I've never heard you say that without seeing it. This tournament was designed to last about three hours. So we'll see how good Anthony Chester is in designing tournaments to end in a certain amount of time. Because I didn't say governor. Coming up on about two hours into our stream today. Four ways to this flop. Ace, king, five. And a gut shot to Broadway for final table Kev. Kevin decides to bluff her Yeah. Nope. Can't with that. Lizard with pocket pair will. Lay it down and final table, Kev. It is possible that I cost Chase chips by saying that, though. One of the best dealers in the country. No, if you don't believe me, just ask him. Had limpable cards. Kevin is an outstanding dealer. Lodge is filled with outstanding dealers, really. You know, I used to deal at the lodge. I remember. Dealt one day a week. We back when we had 30 lodge. employees. Now with over 250 employees, I don't think I could make it's the like cut. Television. Although, every now and then when they're in a pinch, I hear, Slick, can you hop in the box for us? It hadn't happened in about a year, but awesome. I'd do wow. it. I can still pitch. Final table, Kev, with some suited Broadway cards, back, raises to 2,000. <laughs> 250 employees, wow. Yeah, it's a lot of employees. It's a big operation. I mean, the lodge has grown so much. Shout out to all the people who work here. It's such a great community. But started in 2018, and I always laugh, I always joke with, with everybody that, you know, if you're joining the card club, imagine being the first member of a poker club. You have to be incredibly optimistic that there'll be other people behind you because you can't play by yourself. You, you can't. <laughs> uh, honestly, my my number is in the three thousands because there were just uh, there just weren't really any bigger games whenever the lodge the lodge opened, and right. it's quite far from where I live. So I never really managed to make it up until uh, they ran a couple of uh, tournaments that I played. But yeah, ever since I started coming here. On a regular basis, I've loved it. Yeah, it's a great place to play. Looks like Beekeeper and LC. Do we know who number one is? Uh, is it Jason? Uh, no. No, actually, none of the original uh, Levin family are in the top, I think, top four. They, they led others. And it's very coveted, the number one slot. I, I forgot who it is, but... There are people that want to be, you know, they wear it as a badge of honor to it's, be the low, a lower number, in the, certainly in the top 100. If you're in the top five numbers and you want to sell your number to me, reach out to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested. You would want to be that member number. I'm, I'm like 2630, so, you know, it's, oh, yeah. I, I came uh, relatively early on, but now they're in, if a new member came in, now it's over 34,000. That would be your number. Wow. Pretty crazy. Top 10. I'm going to change it to top 10. If you're, if you're in the top 10 numbers at the lodge, reach out to me. Man. We'll, we'll see if we can make a deal. Open up the hood. It's like NFL good. players buying numbers. <laughs> yeah. He says, like, so Final table, like, Kev looks right into the camera and says right. 2,000 with his cowboys. <laughs> He's a real showman, you know? He is a real showman. Like I said, legendary intensity. Oh, man. Expect MFA to call here. Uh, hmm. Three players going to this flop. Final table, Kev. Total control of this hand. Pretty good flop for Kings.
Going to continue here. Some overs for both the voice and MFA, but they're going to say, I want no part of it. Zoom in on this. <laughs> Kings, baby. <laughs> oh, final table, Kev. Every now and then, he's pretty damn funny. Once in a while. We laugh. I kid with Kevin. You know, he, he once sat in the chair just like you. I was out of town on vacation early on in the stream. And uh, Kevin said, can I sit in and commentate? And I used to have a joke of the night. I remember. Remember that? And uh, Kev told the joke of the night that almost got us thrown off YouTube. And we banned him for about a year of coming near a microphone as we see Beekeeper now with the bullets. But he's, Statue of Limitations is over. As you hear the tournament clock chiming, about to blinds go up again. All right, Chase, let's see a flop. What do you say? <laughs> Chase, not happy to see a flop. I think he was hoping to be all in. Uh-oh. Uh, Open uh, ender for final table Kev. 800. But the ace was no good for him now. That was amazing. Beekeeper goes all in. Fold. No, it's not. It's never, never a call. Just open ended. It's never a call. <laughs> the Nola drop cut, though. I mean, that was yeah. slick. That's I years I, of limit hold'em practice. Yeah, I wish I could drop. do the Nola drop cut. I mean, that was that was slick. <laughs> You work in the cage how long and you can't do that? Uh, I thumb cut. I'm, I've always been a thumb cutter. I'll never be a drop cutter. Really? You can't? You worked in a cage in Vegas and you've always been a thumb cutter? Yeah. Poker cage, I don't care about thumb cutters. <laughs> always been a thumb cutter. You don't practice? You haven't? Drop cutting is hard, man. You didn't say you dealt crabs, guys. <laughs> exactly. I didn't say I dealt dice. Uh, what the hell? Drop cutter. And in poker rooms, they don't care if you thumb cut. In general, in Vegas. In the pit, they care, for sure. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> And number 64, LC fires out 2,000. Voice with a couple overs will make the call. Voice. Oh, that was kind of good, actually. See what he did. It's gonna fire out here. Seventy-five hundred. An LC, with just ace high and a wheel draw. Oh. There's the wheel, right in the gut bones. What about that? Oh, she just checks. She's going to let the voice fire again. This is a really interesting Check. spot. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you had quads? Like, no. Great. Oh. I thought the ace four was good. Or just the ace. But... It was. It was. It's definitely ahead of us. No, I shouldn't have checked the river. Yeah. Or... I, thought it was uh, bit, yeah. I, I, I like the river check final. there. I love the river check there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you later. Because if he doesn't have anything, he's probably not calling your big bet. Anyways, right? LC. This is a right. chance for you so, to get LC. chips and let him try to buy it. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the hands that are going to call your bets there are just going to bet themselves. Um, other than hands like pocket sevens, which I guess you can have a lot of, I guess. Fives, 
what was it, 995. So Pi gets sixes through eights, ace five, six five, stuff like that. Might call a bit, might not. Um, but you definitely want to let people continue to bluff uh, when they're telling the story that they have a, a strong hand. All in here from the cage man with ace jack offsuit. All in. And beekeeper with big slick. How much is that? <laughs> 31, 31. Also goes all in. He's going to be in the tank for a while. You want to try? No, I don't, thank you. I'm going to eat lunch after we're done. And the voice with a suited ace himself. <laughs> I would be very surprised if he called here. I think he's just trying to get some TV time. He's doing some inventory. Got a fresh lineup on that beard, too. Chance to eliminate two players, he's saying. So bad. He lays it down. Yeah, so yeah, heads yeah. up. Cage man in deep trouble. I didn't expect him to wake up with Ace King there. Good morning. He'll probably hit a jack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in all honesty, he'll, he'll almost certainly hit a jack. No, no, here, it's so. a 10. I got to do the prepay. Yeah, I understand. Prepay. I'm doing prepay. It's uh, 12, 6. 12, this is for yeah, Beekeeper's yeah. Tournament Life. Yes, put it in the... Put, I was, yeah. You might as well just put it back in your chat. <laughs> Sorry. Ay <laughs> I guess I'm free rolling for 5, but 10, 15, 16, 17. No, no, if I had a pair, I was calling 100%. Uh, hey, Cage man right. needs some help here. Sick part is I call you nice these bolts. Does not come. Really? And oh, yeah. beekeeper's going to take down a nice pot. I would, I would love to pick your brain on that after this is done. For a future, because that's an interesting statement to me. Flip or light. That's what I thought. And then Chase goes in for less. I'm like, okay, well, that's we found at least one real hand. <laughs> interesting I say flip or light, because I would never do that light. Not in that situation. But I knew that. You didn't know that. So it's, e it's easy for me to say that. I know your play style you're about as top. well as you uh, know mine. So <laughs> I know you're capable of raising light there, which I would be too. Yeah. But I'm not going to three bet jam 30 bigs with a light hand. Oh, you just did. You just did. <laughs> no, I was crushing his range. Not that this is a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All in for the cage man with a six suited. Been 30 big, so. And it's good enough. nobody Eight has days. anything to make the Four call hours. there. I think there was a, a kind of interesting discussion there between Tom and cage man where they were talking about what they would do with different hands and assuming what the other person would do. I think that's a trap. Not necessarily what they were saying, but I think it's a trap that a lot of uh, players up with the real get hand. caught doing, yeah, assuming that others play hands and think about hands the same way that they do. Um, when you hear someone say, well, oh, you would never do this with a flush draw or whatever, almost all the time they're assuming that they would never do that. Or they, right. they, in their head they're thinking, I would never do this with a flush draw, so you would never do this with a flush draw. Right. It's a very dangerous <laughs> way to think about poker. Um, because we all have Pause here if he has a decision. Yes. Lizard's going to come along with some Broadway cards. So be heads up. All hearts on the board. Let's see if Lizard sure. wants to just shut it down here. Now he's got Broadway hopes. Nicely played by LC. So uh, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to assume that your opponents are going to react or play in a certain way because you would do the same. Right. Um, being uh, empathetic and understanding how other people think about poker is a huge skill. Possibly at, at smaller stakes, it's it's more important than doing like solver theory work. It's just really trying to get into the heads of your opponents, not 
He was like, not assuming that they play like you do, but making like, judgments on their play based on what you observe. Yeah, I, I do. Um, kind of one. I kind of mentioned before uh, when I saw Kevin open the Jack three off or whatever. I personally would not open Jack three off unless I thought the blinds were so tight they were basically asleep. But seeing Kevin yeah, do that, I'm starting yeah. to draw inferences in my head yeah. about his overall play style. And yeah. a lot of that comes from experience, observation, whatever. But How much I think it's a really important skill to have and not just assuming that because you play a certain way, they're going to play a certain right. way. Or you assume that something is technically correct, that, that they're also going to have that same uh, view or, or whatever. We all come from very different backgrounds in poker, especially at smaller stakes. One pack um, for 32 ounces. And people just think about poker in different ways. And doing your best at understanding uh, how they think about poker like so, uh, is yeah. uh, it's the key at small stakes, I think. I like orange. I don't really like the orange or the lime. I try to rip through. Both them. players, yeah, good stuff. Both yeah, players with pocket pairs so here. Yeah, yeah, Voices flopped already three sets today. Three Can he make it four? Set, Jesse, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> three packs. One three. Good no, good pull. Good yeah, I said. What do you just buy? I do on Amazon. Five. Lower, lower. Thirty. 30 pack? No. It's a... You might just flop a set, you're right. Three's coming. Three of each. I would have taken a three, four, five you flop just for the me mega sweat. <laughs> Element.com comes to like 146. Oh, deuces, huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm doing Amazon. A little over a dollar each. Yeah, that's, I think that would be less than what I'm... With shipping, it's like 146 bucks, and you get three boxes and get one free. Hmm. So 120 total. Stay salty. Stay <laughs> hydrated. Stay salty. This is a non-sponsored. Um, no, today's <laughs> advertisement. But I do have my coupon lights. code if you're interested. Any more electrolytes? These ads. Stay salty. What would Kevin Lysak's coupon code be? I think they're really generic. I think it's like Kevin L and then like oh. four or five letters one or numbers one. after it. So I, I'm going with like FT Kev. No, 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 no. Protein it's, Kev. It's one they give you. <laughs> Gains by Kev. Macros by Kev. <laughs> Stop there. Or Kev Gains. Ooh, that's good. Have games, yeah. That's what your your fitness name should be. No. What do you think of Mickey's reading back there? No, it's just Kev. I never know what they're reading. Is your last name, Kev Gaines. They have a little library back here. Where they choose the books that they want. You got a lot of reading done. This is a baggy hoodie, you know? I mean, I felt you flex, you know? Maybe you are yoked out. I'm still waiting for the Lodge to get the... The old Shauna Hyatt model. Do you ever? Uh, oh yeah. Have you ever seen those? Oh yeah. Where she would interview players after they bust. No, absolutely. We've we've had. Uh oh, all in moment with for MFA with Queen Eight. I'm just gonna just look really. And she's gonna take it out. We've had uh, fireside chats. Um, the problem is, is we've got. It's not a. It's not a produced show, meaning we don't edit it. Uh, it's a delay. So. Yeah, like that's super cool. Talking to somebody after a big hand is tough. already calling up for us to get it in, but we could do it conceivably. Yeah, I think Mickey and Safi would both be great for that. Oh yeah. Tight fold there. Tight, 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 tight. Playing fast. It's funny that you mentioned, Folding Kings. you know, Shauna Hyatt. Gold, and, and you know, back in the day when, you know, high stakes poker was on and they ran the series, you know, the whole hour or whatever long show, they maybe only had 12, 15 hands during that hour, right? Right. Oh, no. But we all lived yeah, for that legal. show. Yeah. We all couldn't From wait for now. high stakes <laughs> poker new season, you know? Yeah. Nowadays, on any given day, there's probably four different streams that you could see and get your Phil's content of thousands of hands in a week you could watch. Absolutely. Um, it's the, the landscape has changed so much, and you know that's why I, I, I cheer all the streams that, that are out there, and I hope that they all do well because I just think it brings new people to the game we all love. Know yeah, the, it, it, the tanks for LC here. All right, declared. Wow. <laughs> and we've got an all-in situation and a call, and Lizard is fighting for his tournament life. 
was a, definitely an L for L C. <laughs> this would be a big double up for the lizard. Well, now you're heading. If you're ever back there and you fancy yourself, oh, oh the set for LC, and I'm gonna owe you a sandwich. I like roast beef. Man, I'm gonna have to plan this out as the lizard who's claimed that he was two and zero oh in manager. Sitting goes, he's now two and one Nick as he goes home. To see you knock Josh out, he's right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's peeking through. Oh, she did that. 50%. Oh, yeah, he's right there. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about his uh, Nick's like, see, this is why she's playing and not me. <laughs> I offered to flip for it. No, he made the smart move. He insists. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I made it to the second tier of the tournament now. Like the, the initial phase has ended. We've all made it to the second. Down tier. to six, folks. Yeah. Started with nine. Three players have been eliminated: Ant, Maestro, and Lizard. And Cage Man is now all in for his twenty-one thousand with the Cowboys. Bink and MFA. They're starting to go. The blinds are at a level. And this will be for MFA's tournament life. I have to do the get up and try to cancel it out. Six, seven, eight, rainbow, one time. I don't care that those cards are predetermined. <laughs> it was a perfect time for me to show you that when you said you thought the new deck had something to do with you run good. I just need an ace. I feel like you get dealt good hands. An ace. Ace. There's yeah. the ace. Wait, just stay. Wait, stay with the ace. And Cageman <laughs> sits down. I had a guy do that to me one time. Looking for a cowboy. Really out didn't help. Deuce. Does not okay, come. Oh, wow. Both players yeah. with a boat. But the ace for MFA will get her the double up. And Cageman. And that was the uh, back card, too. The eight and six came out. It's down to fumes. Oh, cooking show. Mm -hmm. And Jetsu was ah. like, I, uh. <laughs> I'm like, they do that in the cooking. Uh, it was the, the like, was like uh, <laughs> when they battle each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, thanks. Weirdo. for that. It's fine. Thanks. It's so good. Um, no. <laughs> Next round's on Amy. Yes. <laughs> You gotta tell me when Tom's ready. Well, we got three minutes to break, so we gotta. Yeah, we'll get it out. There's no break. Oh, okay. yeah, I thought we were gonna, we're gonna, break. We were, oh. we were gonna yeah. skip the break. No, I wasn't skipping the break. We don't have to do the Some full people 12. Have to yeah, go. yeah. Give five minutes. Yeah, yeah. five minutes. Don't. Do we even have to take a break? Like, yes. Please. You don't want to go on break? Bust out. Further. Because <laughs> this room isn't taking long well, enough. Well, the guys, it's so much further. Believe me, if I had if I had all the chips in place, I wouldn't want to take a break. I don't want to fucking. Take a break. I need, I need Am I allowed to just the players? Quiet. Yes, please. Do. <laughs> I love it. Oh, one and one. <laughs> Blinds now 500, 1,000, 1,000. Beekeeper's making yeah. a nice recovery. He was pretty the short Arctic earlier. Circle poker uh, club here. <laughs> short stack at the table now. Cage man, just 7,500. Yeah. Seven and a half big blinds. blinds. You think if he wins, he's going to go buy the bees something nice with his money? We're going to open up a room in, uh, in <laughs> What Canada. would you get? A hive full of bees. What are they like? All of the <laughs> Sugar? Flowers? You can buy them a bouquet of flowers, I guess. Pollen. You, you want to yeah, bring yeah, them yeah, pollen. I know. Yeah. You're not old enough to remember, but in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, they had what a panic over oh, man, the man. killer bees that would be coming to the United States. <laughs> Africanized killer bees like that would <laughs> basically Bad kill man. people. There was an actual fear back in the late 70s. Free town inhabitants are growing. There was, I remember during COVID, there was talk of uh, murder hornets, they called them. Yeah, I mean, it, but it was a real thing. I remember that, you know, they, they, they had charts on the news of each year, how close they were getting to the southern United States. And they'd be in Texas in like 1985. And here I was, you know, um, scared that the Africanized bees are coming to kill me. Uh, uh, nothing happened. Were they supposed to fly over the Atlantic Ocean? I don't know. No, they were. They were. They made it to South America. They were. 
somebody brought them to South America oh, okay. that they shouldn't have gotcha. to mate with Man, why is everybody always raising your the current b oh, bees, oh, and they took here? over. They oh. basically <laughs> were a dominant beast well, species. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, killer Dang. bees never happened. Thing. He said, they, they, they're there, I, but they just, they're not that killer. Will not be they don't kill people. Well, you know who the real killer bees were is Barry Bonds and Bobby Bonilla. Well, them and uh, didn't they have uh, the Dolphins defense were known as the killer bees too? But back in the Bonacani and who knows? Oh, yeah. got me there. Is effective. Even before I Barry got Bonds and, Barry, uh, and Bobby Bonilla. I realize that already isn't paying attention. Wow. Snap. Aces for MFA. <laughs> and Cageman now, <laughs> for his tournament life, is in deep trouble on hand number 77. I'm waiting. 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 I'm
basically what this is with a little bit of what we call ICM, which is independent chip model, which tries to put a value on the chips relative to the, the payouts. Right? So the, they're still playing mostly for chips with a little bit of ICM pressure. Um, the ICM pressure meaning like once you bust from the tournament, you, you're no longer eligible to, to make the prize. Right. Right. So it's not like in a cash game where once you bust, you can just reach in your pocket. If you have $300 in front of you, you lose the $300. You can pull $300 right out of your pocket. Exactly. And you're right back in it. Whereas here, once you go to zero, you can't rebuy. So you need to have a slightly better hand to be all in or to call with. Right. right? Than you would in a cash game because you can't just reload. You're at zero, you're, you, know, you're, you have to go do something else. You're no, no longer eligible to win money in, in the tournament. Um, so there's a little bit of that pressure right now. Um, as we get deeper, like I was saying, there's, there's more ICM pressure. Um, there's, as, if these stacks kind of get uneven, if let's say that we're down to the bubble and one person has 75 big blinds, one person has 25 big blinds, one person has five big blinds, and we're in the bubble. It is a huge disaster for that person with 25 big blinds to bust. Right. Because right? all they have to do is wait out someone with five big blinds, right. and you make money. So what the person with 75 big blinds wants to do there is put a ton of pressure on the person with 25 big blinds. That is, that's what we call you know, putting the most ICM pressure on someone. When these Friday sit and goes that we've been playing, you kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of that. Um, the, I briefly talked about it. Uh, when I came in the, the bunker after I busted the last tournament, right. I ended up kind of calling off with a uh, hand, uh, king queen off when Mike shoved 11 big blinds, which for chips is a very standard call. Like if there was in a cash game and someone shoved 11 big blinds, happily call that. Um, with, the, the turn out, with the tournament structure, plus the extra, the extra pressure of needing to get one more place higher to improve my chances of winning the lodge seat. Right. Um, I actually went home and, and did a little bit of studying on that, and turns out it was, it was a pretty bad call, um, given what I thought about Mike's shoving range and the payouts. So one of the things that I try to do in poker is I think about the tough spots that I'm in, and then I try to go home and I'll either talk to friends about it. Like that hand I talked to uh, Brendan. He plays the, right. the Friday sit and goes as well, and... Uh, our friend Ryan, uh, he also plays them. Uh, kind of talked about it and then, you know, got on like a, an ICM equity calculator or whatever and ran some numbers. And th that's sort of how I approach like getting better at poker. It's like figure out a, a spot where I was kind of confused about and then using both like the, the mathematical resources that I have and talking to friends about right. it and, and trying to, uh, you know, figure out how to solve the problem, so to speak or figure out what conditions need to be met. So what I did in that situation was I figured out what hands Mike would need to be shoving for king-queen to be a break-even call. Right. And then thinking back to how he was playing, he wasn't shoving anywhere close to those amount of hands. So I, I, I realized at that point that I'd made a mistake. And then what I do is I, I use what I think he's shoving, and then that, that will give me like a baseline for what I should be calling. And it ended up being like a lot tighter. So what I'll kind of do going forward is kind of log that into my head. Um, sometimes I'll like write about it in like a poker journal or whatever, just to kind of like get my thoughts on paper. And then next time before I go play the sit and go, I'll review my notes from the last one and see like, okay, I made this mistake. Going forward, I know that this is a place where I have made errors in the past. And then I try to, to work around that. Yeah. You know, I think a good thing to have in life and especially in poker, but realize where your biases are towards. Like, if you are just a calling station, right, and you think something is close, it's probably not close. It's probably just your bias creeping in. If you think that something is a fold and you're generally a calling station, it, it probably is a fold. Right. So understanding the way that your biases lean. You can think about it in terms of politics or whatever. If you're right-leaning or left-leaning, you know, if something... If you think something is close, it, it's probably a little bit the other way. Right. Um, so understanding your own personal biases and, and where you've made mistakes in the past, you know, you can kind of use that as a guideline going forward when you think something is close. 
Good stuff. Slick Rick talking with Bones here. Let's uh, go ahead and play a special ad that we have. Folks, if you want to rent the Lodge studio, check out this spot right here. How cool would it be for you and your group to star in your own poker show? This unique experience will be available to view forever via your own private YouTube link. The Lodge Card Club is the largest poker room in Texas. Home to the world-renowned Lodge Livestream, which boasts 4.5 million monthly viewers. Your amazing experience will include a professional dealer, an excellent videographer, a graphics technician, a world-renowned commentator, and of course, you, the star, along with your group of up to nine players and up to two guest commentators. Email slickrick at thelodgepokerclub.com. So, the renting of the studio, uh, we got a lot of interest in that. Uh, it is uh, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It's something that you'll have forever and ever. You will star in your own poker show. Hey, if you've got somebody in your group that wants to commentate, they can sit right in here with us. And, you know, some people, their dream and their, uh, they're more interested in commentating than actually being on the felt. So, we've got that co covered. Remember... All people in your party will get a complimentary annual membership to the lodge, which is a $200 value right off there for each person. So it's an incredible value and a once-in-a-lifetime, whether it's your home game, you, you guys want to say forget the home game at Jimmy's house next week, we're going to the lodge, or maybe it's a bachelor party, heck, even a divorce party, whatever, or a corporate event, you know, a lot of... Uh, Companies have retreats and outings. We'd love to be the people that make your uh, event something more than just going out to dinner or going out to Top Golf or something. This is another chance for you to come and have a special memory. We're about ready to come back from break. There you see the Stax LC with 78,500, been really impressed with LC's play so far. The voice, uh, who's flopped three sets that I can count through about 78 hands. MFA, who was about out the door, uh, and she was able to get the double up and eliminate Cage Man the last hand before the break. Final table, Kev, at 30 big blinds. And Beekeeper is our short stack, 25 big blinds. As the blinds creep up, right now no one's in panic mode, Bones, but the blinds will creep up every 20 minutes. We will go. Have I been muted this whole time? 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. Thank you. Other way. That. Yeah, this is the new blind structure that <laughs> we're doing uh, to basically tragic. color up. <laughs> yeah. tragic. I'll have to get the exact reasons, but I, I got the impression to get the blacks off the table, black chips off the table. Um, he mentioned it at this stage. He mentioned the earlier that, that they got rid of the six twelve twelve. God. And they're they're keeping the same we amount of chips in play, <laughs> or in the pot in the middle. Um, but just changing the way that it's structured. Yeah. And the sooner you can color up, you know, for a tournament administration, <laughs> you know, slant, it's it's the better. Less time you have to stop play and get chips off the player yeah. table. Right there, I, I get it. Um, I, I think it, okay. it changes the, the play out of the blinds quite a bit. Just take a picture uh, of it and, and we could paint it. That's and, cool. You know, if, if you're really trying to optimize how you play, you need to kind of figure out the adjustments for it. Uh, Non-sponsored shout out. See if it works out. <laughs> Hashtag painting with a twist. <laughs> Wheat 140. <laughs> huh? Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. I got it.
Dun, dun, dun. Clock. <laughs> <laughs> So as a Patriots yeah, fan, so much. Who, yes. you're, who you're rooting for them to uh, take with their pick? You know, if you asked me that five years ago, I would know everything about it. Not, not as tied in to it as I normally am. I just recently, and there you see some diamonds for LC and a gut shot possibility for the voice. Yeah. It'll be a quarterback. I... I yeah, I, and I don't know, you know. It seems Caleb. Like, yeah, it's Caleb Williams, Drake May, or yeah. Jaden Daniels. Yeah. I mean, the safe pick probably would be Caleb. Yeah, but he, he's probably not going to fall. I would assume he's going to go number one. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think all of them, I mean, they'll all be better than Mac Jones, I would assume. So. Yeah, I, it's, uh I'll give you my thoughts here after this handed. We've got the call, and the five gives the check mark to the voice here. He had it the whole way, but the five gives him a pair. He'll take that. I, I just have quarterbacks, since the NFL has had drafts, there have been quarterbacks that... Um, The, the, that have just been busts. I mean, you don't have to look too far at all the quarterbacks they pick high. And, and then you see a guy like Brady who was picked deep into the draft. Keeps it safe. And he's the greatest of all time. So it's it's always a mixed only if I have bag there. Probably the only way. Yeah, it, it can be hit or miss. No way. Interesting spot here for Beekeeper. He's got a hand that is pretty playable on the button, but uh, pretty big raise to 3,500. And you can see he's, he's kind of struggling with it. I think a fold here is good. I had absolutely no yeah. idea what he was going to do there. Yeah. Good fold. I think if they were about... I don't even know why I came to play today. I'm just frustrated with myself the entire time. 40 to 45 big blinds effective. I think he'd be a bit more interested in, in calling there. It started out looking like a jam. It was like contemplation. NH, NH. Best bet there from MFA to Not take exactly it down. Flop, and she's uh, for, uh, hanging in there after her uh, double up with Ace Knight against Kings earlier. Rick has momentarily stepped out of the bunker, possibly to start loading his parachute for his upcoming jump. Hopefully he has a professional do it. Talking in Tom speak. Be boob. Here the fuck we go. That's <laughs> <laughs> three bet here for Elsie. I don't know if I want to look it. Fine, Chase. Was fun? <laughs> yeah, that was a really good one. <laughs> this is gonna be worth watching back just to see my <laughs> tilt factor and how many how many threes were what I'm all legit. <laughs> with. I like how everyone's playing so far. They all seem. Uh, Pretty knowledgeable about the game, and uh, especially LC. She, she uh, definitely yeah. or impressed me with her uh, 
the timing with her aggression. Like it's, a, uh, good. It's like quite well. <laughs> this is a defend. Yeah, we can defend this. Sicilian defense. Uh, Kevin could have uh, had all three options there. Could have uh, jammed, could have made a small three bet or call. But This is going to be trouble. MFA flops a set. Do it. Tell her I'm all in. And an all in and a quick call. And final table, Kev's going to oh, see no. the bad news. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> For real? Oh, good. Put the hoodie on and then, yeah, zip it all, zip this all. Just taking the mic off. Oh, good. So I guess it on. Wait. Five of hearts one time. You gotta even it up. Give him a heart for a sweat. Let's go. There's a heart. So you're saying there's a chance. Oh, my God. Put that mic back on, bud. Does not come. And. MFA oh my is going to eliminate Final Table Kev. Takes his chair away. And we are down to four. A true gentleman takes his own chair away. Nobody suffered as much as Uncle Kev in this stream. <laughs> and MFA starting to cook. She's eliminated a couple players. She eliminated Cage Man and Final Table Kev. So two men, two women remain. Only two will get any type of payment. The yes. other two, just oh, a memory. No. I couldn't even try. <laughs> it was real bad. Bones' largest tournament win ever. Look how far tournament win? Yes. I know. I, 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 not I not, not like. first place, just oh. large cash. Largest tournament <laughs> cash. Off for seven levels. And here he is. I thought that. 50, some, 50 or 60K. Nice. There. I got eighth in a WPT. Nice. I've been. You, you got in there. I, I, yeah. I, I, I heated up for just a minute. How about you? Cooled right back off. The old one in a row. Tournament? Probably yeah, 2,500. The second one and then Not one. much. Yeah, okay. I, I, don't, I don't play a whole lot of tournaments, but I enjoy them when I do. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, I'll tell you something after this hand is voice. It's his queen. Gut shot possibilities for LC. LC. It's going to lay it down. So I was out at the seniors tournament last year at the World Series of Poker. And I, I made it to the final level of the final 10 minutes before we bagged for day two. Okay. And I said, I just want to bag. I want to bag. I'm not going to play anything. Just going to fold. Oh, Bones, I woke up with kings. Anyways, got it all in good. I bet, got raised three ways. And I was good until the ace hit on the river. But I'm, what I'm saying is I was utterly exhausted. Through, uh, tournaments are grueling. Long, it, we started off at, you know, maybe 11 in the morning. It was close to midnight. It was grueling day, and I was hungry and... The multiple day tournaments are just not for me. I like freeze outs as we see MFA flopping trips and a heart draw for the voice. Should be some action this hand. Yeah, I, I've had a few experiences. I, I made a, a couple of day fives at the main event, and afterwards, my brain just was mush. Oh, I, my goodness. I couldn't. I could barely read. 
yeah, I don't know. The people who do the main event and go deep, it's like, that's grueling. There's the Jack, voice looking for a heart. MFA trips with the ace kicker. She's going to continue here. Let's see what he does here. He's getting a pretty good price to call. But the problem is he's out of position on the river. So he has to decide if he hits his flush, what's he going to do? Is he going to check? Is he going to lead out? And if he's going to lead out, he has to figure out some bluffs. Yeah. So he's not just leading with flushes on the flush cards. Great shot of the studio. Appreciate y'all joining us. We're usually on Wednesday through Saturday, 3 p.m. Central. We offer everything from low stakes, 1 3 500 cap games, to the highest stakes around just a few weeks ago. We had 200 400 with Tesla, Doug, Nick Airball, and more. Here at the Lodge, so we go from low stakes to high stakes, mid stakes, throw in some tournaments, even some PLO. So we give you a little bit of everything here on our live stream. Get a lot of feedback on how the tournaments, and just simply from the numbers of people that are watching, uh, tournaments get high viewership. I feel like, and I've got this theory on that, as we see MFA and LC, the voice of beekeepers, the short stack with 23,000 chips. Tournaments are very relatable to viewers. Like, if you have, like, the, trying to imagine yourself playing 200, 400, 500K deep is extremely difficult. Right. But... It's very easy to imagine yourself playing a tournament where the blinds are 501k and you have 21k. Right. It's, and when you checked, I was and like, like being able to like play vicariously through someone, I think is a big part of like poker viewership. I wish I could uh, hold absolutely, 100%. And I also believe I have also a theory, and you may disagree with me. Feel free to disagree. I always do. That I believe I already gave it away. That everyone has played tournaments. Not everyone we plays we cash. We know, we know cash we players play tournaments, yeah. but not all tournament players play cash. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know that. That that I necessarily. It's just a theory I have. Yeah, I I, I get it, and I, I don't know that. I I necessarily think that the the Venn diagram works that way, but I, I see what you're saying. And I, I think it's very similar to like the relatable thing that I was talking about. Yeah. Where, like you can, you can see yourself playing this spot. Um. The voice with the hockey sticks faces the raise here to thirteen thousand from LC. He's flopped many sets. He decides against this That's one. Sad. I guess what I'm saying is, if you go to the cash tables right now <laughs> here at the lodge. <laughs> And you go one by one. Do you play tournaments? Do you play tournaments? Every single one of them will say yes. Whereas if you go to the tournament tables right here at the lodge and you go one by one, after you bust out of this tournament, are you going to play cash? Or do you play cash? You're going to find a lot that don't. Yeah, maybe. Now, Many, many, many play both. <laughs> yeah. And that's what that's probably where you and me fall in. Yeah, I definitely play more tournaments these days than I used to. Down to four. We started with nine in this sit and go. These are all managers here at the lodge. We call them the blue shirts. Dealers wear black shirts here at the lodge. 
supervisors, managers, floor people wear blue shirts. That's how we recognize folks. But like you were saying earlier, some of the black shirts wear blue shirts. Exactly. Not, not all of the black shirts wear blue shirts, <laughs> but almost all of the blue shirts wear black shirts from time to time. Yes. There we go. Still waiting to see Anthony and Joe in the box. <laughs> I've seen Joe in the box he, before. I, he's dealt to, to uh, us before once to yeah. get a game going. I've never seen Anthony in the box. Now, I've seen his lovely wife, Michelle, in the box. She used to yeah. deal. Yeah, when I, I first met her, she was, she was in the box all the time. Yeah. She's transformed her whole body. Congratulations, Michelle. She has. She looks incredible now. There's quite a few are on the, uh, the weight loss track yeah. here. Um, you, you never had to worry about that stuff. No, no, never, never, had, to, you, uh, never had to sweat that one. Ga lucky. Gaining weight's kind of tricky for me, but, but losing it, never something I, I've had to consider. You're lucky. Everybody has their own challenges, but uh, to be able to eat whatever you want, in this world <laughs> would be a lot easier than what I'm doing right now. I'm down 35 pounds since nice. the first of the year. So That's impressive. Um, so we'll see. Problem is I love food. What's your, what's your, what would be your last meal? My last meal, man. I'd have to go with some sort of prime rib. Really? Yep. Oh. I like prime rib. Or... We'll see. Maybe some lobster on the side. Couple spades for LC and Beekeeper. A spade here would be disaster for Beekeeper. He's going to go all in. And there's the call. He's way behind. Good luck, good luck. He's not going to want to see that. Fuck. No. <laughs> Shit. Pairs are live, dude. <laughs> so live right gonna now? going to be the three. <laughs> And Lauren, uh, LC with a chance to knock no Beekeeper that. out. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. <laughs> it's over. Uh, know nice man. And LC knocks him out. Now, all right, now we got to talk, Bones. Okay. We are down to three. Uh, the One of these players is going to win 1,800. Oh. Another is going to win 900. And the other, zero. Talk about that right now. Okay, from a, a tactical perspective, uh, LC is going to want to put a lot of pressure on the other two as the delta between her and the next stack grows, she can uh, put more pressure on. As their stacks get closer, she, there's, it becomes more disastrous for her to lose pots, so she, she can't put as much pressure. So let's say that she chips up to like 110,000, MFA gets down to like 60, and the voice gets down to like 40. She can really start applying a lot of pressure. Um, but they're all still really deep right now. I mean, they're very the short deep. staff is, the short staff is 58,000, so 58 blinds. So they don't, when they play pots this deep, you don't have to worry about being all in as much as if you're like, 20 or 30 big blinds deep, right? If you're 20 or 30 blinds deep, oh, okay. you have to worry about every hand that you play, you could essentially get all in by the river. But getting 58 blinds in is, it, it's reasonably tough. Um, you're going to have to you're face at least somewhat of a cooler. A cooler, yeah, definitely yeah. a cooler. But, but everybody is still so deep right now that uh, LC can't go too crazy putting a bunch of pressure on them because they can still, you know, have hands that they can call with that are still good hands that they can, you know, put chips in the pot with. I would have liked to see a three bet here from MFA, but, you know, it's not the end of the world to call, especially on the bubble. It's showing LC's all in here. I don't think that's the case. The graphics, there we go. Graphics are going to get worked out. She's got a ton of chips. 
I think she had over 90,000 chips. And even with blinds at 1,500, 1,500, that is what's about 35 big blinds? 1,500. For the short stack? Uh, yeah. 33. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to do math. It's more than that. I'd like to see a check raise here. MFA will win that pot, and she now is second in chips with 63,000. Check that 77,000, and the voice is the short stack now, just 55,000. Six players have been eliminated. Two of these people will be able to go and buy lunch for themselves or dinner. The third will have to go put the blue shirt back on and go back to work. I'd expect Tom to bet here quite a bit. And Elsie has a pretty standard call. Oh, she's going to check raise. I like it. By doing this, she forces a lot of hands, like the one that Tom has that have six outs, or sometimes uh, some hands that dominate her, like A7, A8 to fold. But it looks like he's going to continue. Voice looking for a king or a nine. Very nice double barrel there by LC to really shut down all of those two overcard hands that Tom was floating with. And I think the reason that he called that check raise is assuming that on five deuce deuce, she's just not going to have that many hands. She's going to fold a bunch of the offsuit deuces that she has. So think of all the hands like 10 deuce, 9 deuce, 8 deuce, 7 deuce, 6 deuce. All those offsuit hands are just going to fold. So she, it's a board that she can have trips on, but there's so many of those trips are just going to fold preflop. Right. That there's just not that many hands that she can check raise for value with on 5 deuce deuce. So when he calls, he's assuming that she's going to, there's not enough value to support the check raise, and she's going to shut down on a lot of turns. But when she takes the line that she did, she really takes that play out of his playbook. Um, I think it was you know, a really strong play by LC there. LC briefly was the first player today with over 100,000 chips in her stack. She's looking good here. Pretty good flop for pocket sixes. And the voice says, can I please get a hand? I was flopping three sets earlier. Now I can't even flop a pair. So now, LC should really be able to turn the pressure up, particularly on MFA. Um, when you're in a situation like the voices, I feel like I keep going back and forth between Tom and the voice, but you get it. Uh, he, as his stack gets shorter, he has less to lose because he's, as his stack gets shorter, he's so much less likely to, to be able to get first or second place. So he can gamble a bit more than MFA who really doesn't want to bust before he does. Um, again, especially as he gets shorter. Four. It's going to race here with some Broadway cards. 
what are those called? A Viewmaster? Yes. What it was? Yeah. yeah. I remember those. Little Viewmasters. You put the pop the little I rounds a, film in and click away. I had those uh, for sports cards when I was younger. You could put you'd buy a set or whatever, and you yeah. put the, put the card in, and they'll show you like you know, different angles of Mark McGuire swinging or, or whatever. Nice. It was. Yeah. Yeah, and right now the voice is just hemorrhaging chips. He's down now to about 20 big blinds. Yeah, and I think it, it's, it's definitely frustrating when you're playing shorthanded and you're lose, you lose a few pots in a row. Um, you know, the blinds come around so fast. It's, it's very important to, you know, if you find yourself in this spot where you lose a few pots in a row, just take a deep breath. Understand that, like, understand your situation in the tournament. You know, you still have 20 big blinds. It's not the end of the world. You don't want to punt off these last 20 big blinds. Even though you, it's not as big of a disaster if you bust as when you have a big stack, you don't want to bust, right? So just, you know, take a breath. And it's not like a cash game where you can just, you know, walk outside and get some fresh air or whatever. Um, it's just something you have to be able to do at the table in the moment. And, uh, a huge part of being a successful tournament player is, like, being able to compose yourself when things aren't going well and just, you know, understand that the tournament's not over. You still have chips. As long as you have chips, you know, you're still in it. You're still fighting. And it's important to not give away those opportunities. Suited Broadway cards for MFA. That may be a lucky hat. We may have to sell those here at the lodge if she wins this thing. So here's a spot where I would, I would probably, th well, that's kind of a big open. I, I would kind of three bet her. Oh, okay, I thought she opened a ten. So I would probably three bet there a lot as LC, just to put a little more pressure on MFA. Let her know that, hey, you can't just open everything on the button. Like, especially on this bubble where I have the chip lead. You know, I would three bet. She had nine six off there. If I had nine six suited, I would probably three bet it. Just to kind of put a little more pressure on her, on the bubble. And the voice has a hand here where he could shove. He can make a normal raise as well. I think against someone like MFA, I would just make the normal raise. I think she's not going to be too, too sticky in the, the big blind. The voice is just happy to drag some chips his way. He's been hemorrhaging down to three. Only two get paid. We've been at this now for about three, a little over three hours. Right at three hours. Ace here for the voice. Ace rag. On the button. He's going to raise. And here's ace 10 suited. Just going to make the call here. MFA, and LC's going to get out of the way. So we're heads up. Ace here would be disaster for the voice. Dominated here. Picks up the wheel draw. In position here. All in. Goes all in. And a quick fold from MFA. Let's pick up there from for the voice. It's a pretty big shove, but he does get hands that dominate him like ace 10 to fold, which is always nice. He's been, he's been uh, losing a few pots, but he's definitely not taking his foot off the gas.
think he has a hand here that he probably wants to defend. All hearts here. Nobody with a heart in their hand. The ace for LC. And it's gotten a little quiet amongst these three. Yeah, it usually does whenever it gets onto the bubble um, or very close to it. Not only just because there's fewer players at the table, but each decision is, is worth a bit more money, and you're, you're in more hands. And I haven't even heard any talk of any type of chop here or at least a save for third place. Nah, uh, we're here to we're here to play for it all, Ricky. Are you one of those guys who in when you get to vote chop or no chop, you are always the one who says no chop? No chop. Ever. In any situation. I did it for what tournament was it for? It might have been for the Deuces Cracked. And it was I I felt uh you know Krista the dealer? Yes. She was at our table and she was very very, very determined to cash. Right. And was basically begging people to be able to make a deal. Right. I, I felt bad. So, like, it... In a, a case, so it was a pity chop. It, it was. Let's just call it what it is. It, it, was, it was a pity chop. Um, <laughs> I, I, like to, I like to play those spots. I know. Um, to, to me, like, I don't... Nothing about a min cash is going to, to change my life. Right. Um, but I like playing those. Like, I think those are like the fun spots in the tournament. <clears throat> well, and there's a lot to be said for, you know, you don't get to play heads up often. Right. And some people want the experience to where if they ever were in a situation yeah. that really was for big money, they want that experience of playing heads up. I get that. Absolutely. And it's it's hard like it's hard to get heads up. It's hard to get three handed. Yeah. Um. It's you know it's not the easiest thing in the world to like cash a tournament. So like I, I like playing the I like playing the bubble. I think it's interesting. And I've I've bubbled a ton. And like you know, everybody has a good laugh whenever you're the person who says no, and then you, you bubble or whatever. And that's fine. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like just playing it out. Um, it, I was at a tournament the lap. Probably six months ago here at the lodge, there were six of us left. We voted, and there was one person who voted no, and one guy was pretty adamant. He says, "Come on, who who's who voted no?" You know, and so we just two more people got eliminated. We voted again, and one person voted no. He goes, "Come on!" <laughs> Turns out he was the guy who was voting no. He just wanted to to throw oh, the scent that. off. Whoever that is, let me buy you a beer sometime. <laughs> That's beautiful. He wanted to throw the scent off of us trying to hunt down who was who we needed to convince. I support all trolls. <laughs> MFA King Ten, Battle of the Ladies here. LC's Ace way out in front. So there, there's the spot where playing for chips, I would never check fold king ten with the the backdoor flush draw there. But you face, you give up some chips. You're 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 on the bubble. You give up a few chips. You could face face possibly tough decisions on the turn. It's just easier to fold. Um, I I don't know that I would fold in that spot, but I would definitely fold in that spot more than I would fold you know, in a regular spot that wasn't on the bubble. Uh, and so this is a spot where Elsie, like I kind of talked about before, you, you notice that she's chipping up quite a bit now. Yeah. Um, 
Every you'll see it on I, the camera. It's like, like yeah. every. I mean, she's she's I had can. you know reasonable cars to do it, oh, okay. but you see that the pressure that MFA is under here, where she can't really like, she has ten seven off in the small blind. Normally you call there or maybe make a small raise, <laughs> but um, you know under the ICM pressure you can't really do that, and. All of that is going to benefit LC. Oh, shit. It's my turn. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I still did that wrong. Oh, Jesus Christ. There we go. There are even spots in extreme spots in tournament poker where let's say that there are six people left and five people get paid. One person has 100 big blinds, everybody else has 40, and one person has two. Oh, well, let's see. Or everybody else has 20 big That's blinds and one person has two big blinds, blinds or whatever. Okay. There's spots where <laughs> the big stack will actually want the smallest stack to stay alive so he can keep pillaging from the other four people or whatever. Right. Um, those used to happen... I mean, they still do happen, but when I would play sit and goes back in the day, those would have those would come up quite a bit, and those are just like the, the best spots ever. It's so much fun to just be able to, you know, rampage the whole table, right? Because they they need that one person to bust, I'm gonna go but in this the one person that you're not trying to bust is that person, right? Uh, so you get lots of cool uh, cool spots like that. Damn it. Like, seriously. Oh, seriously. my God. Wait, you have an ace? LC can't get anybody to call, and she shows her kings. So we see who's getting all the cards. I mean, I don't know how we're surviving on this side, Tom. I'm just, you know. Looking for something. You think if I cash, they'll let me just not come to work tonight? Seems unlikely. <laughs> It's only one point unattended, yeah. It's, uh uh, it's many months, dude. Oh. <laughs> oh, we were no, doing so good. She didn't. We were doing so good. Oh, yeah. We're getting to that point. It's my We're myself. three handed. We're not seeing many flops. It's part of tournament poker. You see the chip stacks LC 119,000, MFA 72,000, and the voice. Oh, oh my god. 32,000 blinds oh are 1,500, 1,500. Once we get down to heads up. Nice knowing you. <laughs> it was great to play stream one time. <laughs> once we get heads up, there is no big blind Annie. And I want to say, yeah, the, the, the blinds are 1,500, 1,000. So the blinds do go down a little bit. Oh, God. I thought she was blind. When we get three handed, the big blind Annie. Uh, here we go. All in for the voice with his pocket pair, MFA. This is a pretty uh, tough spot. I feel like this would be such a dumb car. Blinds are about to go up here. Oh, man. How pleasant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the equity. Voice of 53%, MFA 47%. Sorry, give me a second. I feel like you're not doing this unless you have something. So if she calls and loses, they're going to basically switch places, chip-wise. She calls and wins. Oh, don't need to worry about that. God, I don't even know if I want to see that hand. If you folded, you definitely weren't ahead. I had an ace. Yeah. That was a suit of ace. Yeah, if you folded, you definitely weren't ahead. I am, but I just didn't like how small my ace was. Yeah. That was suited. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to call with, like, ace five suited. Because oh, then you only have one over. a little over. higher than that. Yeah. Not ace six either. <laughs> <clears throat>
Did you have any? I had sixes. I thought you might have had a pocket pair. Yeah. I've had ace eight of hearts. That was a rough We're three handed. <laughs> The voice with Jack-10 offsuit. This is a hand that can, can go either way. I definitely wouldn't fold. All in. All in. Voice with a ton of chips. Does she want to give the voice, uh, LC with a ton of chips, does she want to give the voice any more? That's the thing. I think all the players know that the voice in seat one probably... Experience-wise, tournament-wise, he's... Is it only a thousand? We, we said it when there was a full table that he was probably the best, most experienced tournament player. Do you want to give the most experienced, best player more chips when you've got him on the ropes? Or do you want to bust him? This is a good point, too. But like six high is probably not the hand yeah. to do that. <laughs> Let's see what she decides to do here. They're about 30 fig, 35 big blinds deep. She There's the raise. Big slick. Three-handed. Broadway cards are pretty powerful in your hand. I would just expect her to not be three-betting that many hands. So Queen Jack definitely goes down to value, but it looks like she's going to go ahead and defend. I would definitely defend if it was suited. Um, and if I thought MFA was three betting a, a wider range, I would defend. But she seems reasonably M tight. MFA with the only diamond on a three diamond board. Gut shot possibilities for LC. And overs. Going to lay it down. So... Almost neck and neck, chip wise. The two ladies. <laughs> Sometimes you're better off not looking. I, black. I hope they're red. I hope they're red. I hope they're red. I got, I got a red one. Let's go. 50 50. <laughs> Big shout out to Clayton, the tallest dealer in the country. He's been our only dealer today. Mickey, the game host. I want to thank everybody watching. You guys are the best. This special sit and go for the blue shirts, the floor people here at Lodge Card Club. The snowman for MFA. And ace-10. We could see some fireworks here. The raise to 22,000 from LC. This would be a really interesting spot when it gets back to MFA. And the voice would love to see the two big stacks battling. He's going to step aside and watch ringside as MFA decides Come what on. to do with their snowmen. And she, wow, <laughs> going to lay it down. Uh, God, I can't wait, wait to look, look at these hands. See how bad they play. <laughs> Thoughts on that fold? I personally would have just three bet uh, from the small blind to begin with. You know, on our journey, Jesse and three town. Uh, with that size, taken over. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's actually very really close. I think nines. I would <laughs> back raise. Well, it's on the bubble. That's pretty close. I think it's a pretty tough spot. I, I probably would have just three bet to begin with. 
Um, but yeah, it's a tough spot. Well, it's her city, so. <laughs> and just pay the taxes. <laughs> Open ender Ooh. for the voice and a I think we're diamond be draw. For LC. He's not happy to see her bet this big because he sees he doesn't have much fold equity. All in situation. Oh, draw. Draw, draw. We're playing Kino. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm Real sorry. tough spot here for Tom. <laughs> this is for <laughs> the voices tournament <laughs> life. Here, but maybe one time. Ooh. And there's the straight. It's so funny. But <laughs> open ender plus the flush draw for LC. Wow. Wow. And LC gets there. Voice got there on the turn. LC on the river. Looking for a diamond and not even paying attention. Go ahead, girl. And we are down to our final two. <laughs> Them guys, <laughs> right? And it's no, the women. Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Two women wow. started in our nine person, to play against. <laughs> person field, and they'll be sharing the money. And I'm what? When the river came out, I was like, I know, I, I was I, waiting I, for a diamond, and I was like, oh shit, like yeah. I didn't even. He pushed up the cards, and that's when I knew. What... I'm sorry, it was small blind, right? <laughs> I was looking for a seven. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, so Very nicely played by the ladies today. Absolutely. Congratulations to both LC and MFA. They'll be going home with the cash. First place, 1,800. Second place, 900. Oh, sorry. And then look. It'll be interesting to see. I don't know how much heads up experience either of them have. Um, but I don't know either, but if I were had to guess, I'd say very limited. Yeah. How about trips for MFA? But it's LC who's going to fire out. And just a call from the MFA. Goes check, check. It won't on the river. Four of diamonds comes out. MFA with the check mark. She's going to bet, and there'll be a fold from LC. And we'll go on to hand number 120. Looks like Mickey is done for the day. Now that there's no more chairs to take out. <laughs> There's a set for LC. 
Not much for MFA here, but she's going to keep continue firing with her ace-10. Nice spot to check raise. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's my first set of the day. I think. Everybody sitting sets but you, Ricky. When, it's been it, months. When's it going to be your time? You it's know? been months. I had a great start to the year. February was bang. March has been a disaster on the poker felt for me. How many hours a week do you play? Not, not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot. So, you, so you've had like uh, three bad sessions? <laughs> <laughs> um, four. Four, okay. But, you know, I'm not complaining. All hearts on this flop. Pair of fives for LC. A couple overs for M. And he, one of the overs is hit, but another heart out there. Everybody's going to run for the hills here, thinking the other has a heart. Two pair now for LC. But the MFA is going to bet 5,000. So many hearts out there, so easy to make a flush, but there's the call. I got a 10. I don't have any hearts. Two pair. I think the graphics are a bit wrong on the chips there. It's like LC has about 150-ish. Yeah, there should be 270,000, right? Didn't they, did they start? No, they started with 25,000, right? Yeah, so 225. 225. Yeah, I think they might have awarded a pot to MFA that was LC's. Yeah, it looks like maybe 150,000 yeah. in LC stack. So that's probably what, 75? Yeah. For MFA. Top pair here for MFA. Yeah, the, the chip stacks may be off a little bit. We are working through some software issues. LC definitely has, looks to be about 150,000 chips. And, L, and uh, MFA has, we're thinking about 70,000 chips. We just need a quick all-in hand. So either I double up or you win. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a pose. That's how it goes. <laughs> either or. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Listen. I don't have anything. Not how oh I'll take it. Oh my god. I don't, I don't have anything either. We missed a bet. Let's go, girl. Boom, 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what song that is. <laughs> Yeah, oh, like, shit. Oh <laughs> Six. Sure. Why not? Oh. See if I check. go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. yeah, you have to work I tonight. I slept two hours, yeah. I was well, up. I was like, I need to, I should get some sleep before this. Uh -huh. I fell asleep for like an hour and a half. And nice. I woke up and I was like, yeah, I can't fall back. Uh -uh. Heads up here. So LC and sleep after MFA. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, it's me first. Or sometimes okay. the adrenaline gets me. <laughs> We should just do one race. Seems like this is going to be a what pretty grinded out heads up match. <laughs> yes. Either of them uh, seem too excited about putting a lot more money in the pot, pre flop with marginal hands. So. Match up like this end up just kind of waiting around until there's a, a cooler. There's the call from MFA with King Queen. Both players missed this flop. But they both have a little something. Something, something. Backdoor yeah. possibilities for LC, gut shot possibilities for MFA. We'll see if LC decides to bluff with her open ender here. King is going to be good. Check. Back high. King high. That's a good hand. Oh, shit. Blinds are going up now. Right under there. <laughs> we really get that break in 59 minutes if we're still here. <laughs> yeah. uh -uh. Who knows? I'd like it to be less. Time leave the ladies last, uh. and it gets real tight. <laughs> It goes, I feel like every time I play a tournament and I go deep, it always goes forever, like yeah. exceptionally long. I've played heads up for like five or six hours before. So oh, no. Oh. Not Don't I'm say doing. that. 75. Wow. I don't think I'll make it five or six hours. <sighs> Did I have not enough? Did I Five have more. more. If you had 2,000 out there. 500 more? Okay, sorry. Sorry. Oh, shit. Oh. I'm so sorry. 
sure I wasn't trying to cheat you. Oh, you're good. But no, now I'm 15. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get chips somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Heads up, we started with nine in this sit and go for the supervisors here at the lodge. Each player put $300 up. <laughs> paying two spots. These two are in the money. All right. Second place will get $800. Well, that's flowers. $900. First place will get $1,800. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not playing hands. They're probably not that great. Seventy-five. Yeah, I like this. The hockey sticks for LC. Let's see if looks like there's going to be a call there from MFA. There we go. Let's see three. Nine, ten of hearts. First flop in a while. As we see a nine for MFA. LC is going to continue. It's going to be tough for uh, LC to win this hand. I assume she's going to check back here. See if she finds a bluff here. Oh, no. MFA is going to go in bet. I want to thank Bones for hanging out with me for the afternoon. He's got other engagements. He did a wonderful job. He'll be back. We, we like having Bones around the bunker. And it's always a pleasure listening to his insight. Nice. Pretty good stuff. <laughs> so it'd be Slick Rick yeah, taking you the rest of the way home. They keep falling apart. <laughs> Down to heads up between MFA and LC. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I win without even. <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> I, was gonna... I was like, wait, I raise. <laughs> <laughs> You're like already mugging him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll put it out this mm -hmm. time soon. No, oh, oh, mother. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much your much so.
Thanks for dealing for this. That would have been my own fault. I know this is tedious. I know. I feel bad. Yeah. I'm him. I hate my life. Just (laughs) get a cooler (laughs) already. Just get it all in. It's going to be like 85000 or so when I push. Oh, <laughs> Just so you it. know. Oh, I'm yeah, a little more than that. Oh, oops. Hand number 141. Both players were still close to equal the amount of chips. What we need is a cooler. Not seeing any flops lately. Hopefully they'll come soon. We appreciate y'all joining us. It's been a fun day. The blue shirts get a chance to play. The nine players who played all are floor people here at the lodge or managers. Give them a chance to get on the felt under the lights. MFA with the pocket. All right, we got two... Two pocket pairs here. Here we go, folks. There's a set for LC. Another flower, man. You like uh, hit every. Well, I don't even know if you did, but I know my your pair is higher than mine. Wow. Well, there you did it. <laughs> Jesus, thank God my pair didn't come. I know, I was like, I hope your pair is higher than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I take my 900 and go <laughs> forward? Not even any discussion of chops. These two ladies want to play it out. Mm. 
Yeah, little baby stack right now. Sixty-one five. Well, what's that? Uh, Sixty. What's that? Yeah. They're gonna do a little chip count. <laughs> All the rest of the chips. <laughs> One fifty-nine five. Looks like LC has one hundred and fifty-nine five, and MFA. Yeah. Should have the other 65,000 chips. <laughs> that don't have we got the chip stacks correct. So about a two to one chip stack lead for LC. Big slick for MFA though. And there's the call with 5-4. Clayton's going to give us a flop. Open ender. I'm sorry, a gut shot possibility for LC. And MFL with big slick is going to fire out and continue for 7,000. All-in moment, and the quick fold. You want this card? <laughs> My card's see through. Yeah. <laughs> Three hearts on this flop. LC with the heart in her hand. Goes check, check.
going to hand number 152. We've been heads up for a while now. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us today on this Friday. April just around the corner, a couple days away. Make sure you make it to the Lodge Championship Series. April 24th through May 14th. Just a few weeks away. Our flagship event. Couple diamonds for LC and a wheel draw for MFA. Five of diamonds would be nice. There's the flush for LC and the check mark. Now, MFA has a diamond draw for herself, but she's going to lay it down. Lines are about to go up in this heads-up match right now. Down to two. Holy shit. I just end up lining out over here. Oh, Blinds are now 15,000, 3,000, 3,000. We'll be back tomorrow with another show, 3 p.m. Central. Top pair for MFA. We'll go to hand number 157. Tomorrow's stream will be a 5-10 match the stack game. And next week's schedule will be Wednesday through Saturday. Wednesday's next Wednesday stream will be a one three five hundred dollar cap game, which have been very popular with the viewers. We appreciate that. Reporting the show. Hey, 
uh, fours are going to be good. You don't for normally LC. record shows. There's a lot of straight shows. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, LC is right now leaning on MFA. MFA is chips are depleting as the blinds now are 1,500, 3,000. Open ender for LC. Just hasn't been too many hands collisions yet in this head once they got down to heads up. MFA with Ace Jack. MFA with Jack 10, okay. LC. Not much. <laughs> with the Ace 5. Not much. I call and then I lose, and then I'll put it about the same. This. Makes the call here. Ace five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got life cards. That's what I've actually. Cards. That's the. This <laughs> is for MFA's tournament I life. I swear, even now, a garbage ass here. Yeah. And for this sit go championship. There's the ace for LC. Runner, runner, I think. <laughs> MFA needs some help. Does not come. It's over. LC. Good game. Will win this. Win the $1,800 first pl prize. <laughs> MFA will collect $900 for finishing second in this sit and go. And that will do it for us. I want to thank our production staff, the best in the business. Yeah. No, this is. I want to thank Clayton for dealing from start to finish. My goodness. Good job, Clayton. Mickey was our game host for everybody here at the lodge from the front counter. The dealers, the floor people, the ownership group who's invested so much in our live stream. But mostly, I want to thank Chatsville, the people who are watching right now. Without you, we wouldn't be doing this show. Thank you, everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central. Take care, everybody.